Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Gravin coming to you from Chicago. As usual, back at it in the Wisconsin v. Brooks case. Let's do it. While we're waiting, a lot of you asked me about this little nugget. State of Wisconsin versus uh, Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Good morning, Judge Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow appearing for the state of Wisconsin. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I've set for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any other facts in the charging instruments. Record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person, in custody, in street clothing, wearing a suit and tie and a mask. For the record, uh, I did not consent to being caught that name, Your Honor. All right. And we and still have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction. Um, the court has the addressed record. it for the record. So for the record, be, has it been proven? Um, Mr. Brooks, I stand by the written decision that I issued yesterday. in this case last week. A second what copy was provided. You Please don't to? interrupt me. Uh, a second copy was provided to you. I know you saw it because you tore it up yesterday. Um, so I'm not going to address it any further. Are you you are mistaken and wrong about the law that it needs to be verified or proven. Um, are you talking about the paper I accepted in return for value? So with accepted that, value I believe, value? Mr. Brooks, I'm going to continue with this trial, whether you believe jurisdiction has been proven or not. It has not. not been proven for the record. And it has. So it has that not. Detective uh, Carpenter was on the stand. And it needs to be proven. And I... Heard of prosecution. Would like to have him brought back up unless there's any other issues the parties wish the court to address from the state. I did want to address something briefly. Go ahead. Um, as the court knows from our short discussions yesterday, the state will be playing a couple videos of the defendants in his statements. Um, the court had previously heard those as part of a motion hearing. And I'm not sure if I'm really getting the defendant notice or what I'm doing, but I, I really tried hard. And I am pulling out snippets from this because if the court recalls, there are a lot of references that the defendant makes to prior domestics with Erica, um, his prior record, things that the court had previously excluded. So I'm going through and I am um, pulling specific time um, ranges from this so that nothing that was previously ruled um, inadmissible comes in. And I guess, obviously, this defendant has the absolute right to cross-examine the witness. He has the right, and we've offered, and we have been um, putting exhibits up for him. But I do want it to be noted that I would not be willing to have Mr. Brooks just say, oh, go to about the seven-minute mark, um, because... If he even goes like two seconds before a clip that I had played or two seconds after, it could include information that was previously ruled inadmissible. And I guess what I would say to the defendant is the court has previously protected the defendant um, to make sure that things didn't come out. Where he asked a question that could be construed as opening the door and the court said, we're not going to go there, Mr. Brooks. And he got the message. However, with this, if there's any portion of this video that's played that talks about the prior with Erica, I do consider that that he has opened the door and I will be asking the witness about it. So I guess this is maybe more so directed at Mr. Brooks that if he plays clips that um, contain that information, he will have opened the door. He's had this video for weeks at least, 
Um, this These videos have been subject to a motion hearing. I'm not sure exactly what access he had to them before. I've reviewed the five hour video a number of times. I've been very meticulous in my timestamps that I'm grabbing out from here. And I am unwilling to have the defendant put Miss Gussie in a spot where he's kind of well around this point. He needs to give exact times that he wants um, started and stopped because what happens is if he says, okay, can you pause here? By the time he says that, five seconds may have gone by, which may be enough to, some of these, if I would play two more seconds than what I have here, it would open the door. So I just want the defendant to realize that this is kind of a slippery slope here and um, he proceeds at his own risk. And I'm not going to ask Miss Gussie to stop it at a certain time because I think something's about to be said. Um, that's on the defendants. Um, and if he opens the door, I can um, assure you, I will, I will go into it. Um, so I did want to put that on the record, Judge, not to be a jerk about it. Kind of, yes. But just once it's out there, I can't and not it? address it. And if it's the defendant who brings it out there um, into the view of the jury, then I'm going to feel compelled to address it. Um, and then I didn't know if the court wanted to go through the preliminary instruction that you had provided previously on the interpreter. My understanding is that Mr. Marquez speaks very little English. Um, if you want to add the um, added paragraph, that would be fine for the state. We've had very, I've had two discussions with him and uh, I would not say he is, um, that English is a comfortable language for him. <laughs> All right, thank you. As to the first part, to what the state brings up regarding the redacted recording. I would remind Mr. Brooks, the court did enter some rulings previously. What do you have to roll your eyes at me? Let's start the morning off on a good note, I didn't sir. Roll my eyes at you, so I don't think it's fair that you should say I rolled I my eyes I saw you roll you. your eyes at me. And I, I didn't roll my eyes at you, so don't, don't do that. Well, Mr. Brooks. <laughs> so don't do that. I appreciate a little bit more respect. These I would rulings, too, Your Honor. Let me finish, because now you're interrupting me. These rulings were entered by the court um, to prevent other acts evidence from coming in. But a defendant can open the door in a variety of ways. These recordings, and I have reviewed them previously, uh, do contain uh, discussion and statements by you regarding these other acts. And as you heard from Attorney Basie, she has all of the timestamps to stop at appropriate times so that the state does not run afoul of those pretrial rulings. You can open the door by asking questions, by asking for a video to be played um, and not knowing those exact timestamps. I think it's important that I reinforce what the state has just advised you of uh, so that when you are watching the recording as all of us will be. Um, if there is something you want replayed and you want to cross-examine the witness about that, you know those time stamps and then the state has graciously indicated they would assist once again in replaying portions of that video. I don't need a response from you unless you feel you would like to give a response yeah, to any of that. Um, with all due respect, they're the ones that want to play the video so I don't, I don't understand how I'm the one opening the door. They chose to play the video, so. They're not going to play the entire video, though. They're going to redact out, probably stop, fast forward, the portions that this court said would, would be inadmissible. So if you, so for example, if during your <clears throat> cross-examination of Detective Carpenter, you ask the state to replay a portion of the video and you say, go back to around the seven minute mark. You have to understand that you may open the door even inadvertently to some of those other acts, evidence coming in. So what I'm telling you is if you want any portions replayed, 
then, or if you ask for the entire video to be played under the rule of completeness, that you have an understanding that you would be opening the door to the evidence of other acts coming in. Potentially, I'll have to rule on it at that time. Um, but so be mindful of the timestamps. I, I don't understand it, Your Honor. That that'll be that's almost like you making a ruling and then it, it not having any standing. If you well, already honey, made a the ruling. rulings against them, I told the state they can't offer this evidence. Right. They're that's the what I'm one. So if you offer the evidence or ask questions that would open the door, that's a different story. And we all have treaded lightly when you've asked questions that would have opened the door to a variety of witnesses. So the state's just simply saying, look, <laughs> we're going to do our job. We're not going to put in the other acts evidence. We're going to pause the video, fast forward the appropriate spots. But if you want any portions replayed or if you ask for the entire video to be played, uh, then you do that at your peril of having those other acts evidence come in. So that's all I want to tell you. Um, as far as the jury instruction, uh, do you have any position on whether that second, well, I shouldn't say second, it's the very last paragraph where it says, add the following if appropriate. Do you have any position on whether the court uh, reads this entire Happy jury birthday, instruction 60 to the jury prior to Mr. Marquez being called as a witness? Yeah, I think the jury should hear whatever need, needs that they need to hear. Do you have a position on that last paragraph specifically, sir, given the information that the state has provided today? Last paragraph. It's in brackets and it's after a bolded section that says, add the following if appropriate. I advise the parties yesterday we would be talking about that this morning. I mean, it was just stated that um, the witness doesn't speak very good English. And so that would, that would indicate that it would be a lot more work for the interpreter to make That's sure. That's not that what I'm asking about, sir. I'm asking whether you, whether you have a position on whether I include the very last paragraph of that instruction uh, to the jury. No, I don't feel like that needs to be read to the jury. Um, I think it's pretty it's pretty clear from the I don't feel like all the language leading up to that. Perfect. Perfect response. Let me ask attorney Daisy a question about uh, oh, we're having a character moment now. The office of the district attorney has had with Mr. Marquez. Were you able to communicate at all in any way in English, even if you would describe it as broken English? Yes, I think our last conversation, we probably said, um, I said something in English, he responded. And then when I said something else, I think he needed translation for that. His primary, our victim witness person, <clears throat> um, specialist assigned to the case is bilingual and she speaks to him in Spanish. All right, given that a bit of information provided by the DA as an office of the court regarding his ability to answer some, but not most. I think it's uh, appropriate to read the very last paragraph. Um, certainly doesn't hurt. It's not going to take away. So I will read the entirety of jury instruction 60. Obviously, the part that uh, says read here if appropriate comes out. Uh, and then um, I will print that off. And uh, that is what I will read at the appropriate time. Did that print, Madam Clerk? Quick, quick question on that. Um, how do we know exactly what words uh, the witness will be able to understand in English versus? That's not how the interpretation works. The questions are in English. They're interpreted in Spanish. 
to the witness. The witness will answer, presumably in Spanish, uh, and then the witness's words will be interpreted in English, and it's the English, as this instruction says, that is the evidence. I think it's a little unfair that the uh, prosecution has had conversations with the witness, and I haven't, considering that it's my witness. They were on the state's witness list as well, I believe. So um, it's fair for either party to reach out. And if witnesses want to talk to either party uh, in preparation, that's frankly fair game. So how, how would I be able to reach out to a witness? Uh, Mr. Brooks, you are representing yourself. That uh, obviously poses some challenges and difficulties, but that is the state and stage that we are at. So boom. with that... Um, I know uh, we'll get Detective Carpenter on the stand. He can come up and be out here uh, when the jury comes out. Um, so come on up, sir. I will swear you in again, as is my practice when there's a witness on the stand for a one more, day. I have one more thing real quick. Um, well, it needs to be other than subject matter jurisdiction. It's, so what is it? You didn't even let me get to it. I said, what is it? I said, it needs to be something other than subject matter jurisdiction. Well, can I what get is to it? it? You can say. There's no way to know what I'm going to say if I can't say it. Mr. Brooks, please. <laughs> He's going to say subject is, matter jurisdiction. I, I want to address why my um, ICFs have not been addressed. Because I know you have them. <laughs> oh. Why have I not right. gotten copies? I've gotten copies of every other ICF. Why not the, the recent ones? Sir, I am not uh, going to be the intermediary anymore for ICFs that are directed to the uh, clerk of court regarding copies. That's not that's not explaining why um, I haven't. I'm even not the been keeper of the if, record. If so if there's something received. you want me to address, then you should address your ICF to me and not the clerk of court. Well, where is the where is the ICF? Sir, if I sent it, I should I be able not, to get a copy. I've gotten copies of every single one. You need whether to they ask were addressed, for that from the clerk. Whether of they court. were addressed to you or whether they were addressed to the clerk of courts, I've always. I'm not going to address told, that further, Mr. Brooks. I'm not going to be the intermediary when so you have the, questions to the clerk of courts. So for what's the point of me sending them? the ICF, me doing what you asked me to do, and sending them, and then not being able to know if they've even been received and get a copy of them, which I've been getting copies you of them ever since. For a copy of the ICF, they don't have any obligation. To send I addressed. I addressed it when I first sent it. I asked you on the record, did you receive it, Mr. Brooks? You said, I didn't I receive know, anything honest. because nothing has been sent to me. Well, so where's the if ICF? there's something that you need, then you should reach back out to the clerk of. Court. I shouldn't have to do but that. We're not going to take it. up court time regarding an ICF sent to the clerk of court. Again, I will advise you once again, I did this the other day, if there's something case related, it needs to be addressed to me. If it has to do with the record, it needs to go to the clerk of court. And it was. Because it was I am sent not to the clerk of court. Oh, the, okay. But I still, uh, should be, I still should be able to early. be told if it was received and get a copy, which you've done that before, every single ICF. And I told you so I would no it longer change? be doing that, sir, because of this very issue. It so you say so now time. it changes? So now it changes all of a sudden. No, it didn't change all of a sudden, sir. And you know that. So don't no, try to no. confuse me. Does the it record. change all of a sudden? Because no, I've it, been getting copies of everything I've sent, which is what you asked me to do. This changed last week, and you it know should, that. It shouldn't change. So no, I don't that, know. It. I'm bringing the jury out, and I'm not addressing this issue. So sir. I want, I want the copy of my forward. ICS that I send. Um, send the request to the I don't have to office. send her another request. Where's the one that I just sent last week? All right, the jury is going to come out. Sucks so for you. You don't know what to do. I, I will, but at the same I'm time, saying. you still have to. Jury. I did what you asked me to do. <laughs> if you tell me to do something and I do it, and then now you're saying I, I'm not going to get a copy of what you've been providing them ever <laughs> since I, ever since you told me to do it. Mr. Brooks, the rules so many on that to make. So no, many no, it did not. I'm still supposed to be able to say if it's been received or not. So why should I have to send multiple ICFs to even know if they, they've been received? That's ridiculous. Right? I'm going to give the parties the uh, final version of jury instruction 60, which I will be reading at the That's, appropriate time. Come on. You can't change stuff at the last minute. You no, asked Mr. me to Brooks, do something. I did it as a courtesy. You and frankly, no, you're not courteous. I'm not. I'm not so even. The jury's I'm, not even coming out. I'm not even referring the to, to that. Reflect that the jury I'm referring is to coming the fact, I'm referring out. to the fact that you oh, haven't guys. even Mr. had Brooks, enough respect to tell me it's been received. to the jury. They're coming out. Okay, oh. that doesn't that doesn't. Uh, he's headed for contempt. He's, he's headed for watching this in the cell today. Receive ICFs that you told me to submit. You told me that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will disregard the commentary by Mr. I accept for value point. in return for value this document, just like you've been hiding everything from the jury that they the need. The jury to will 
disregard. The court is not well, hiding I mean, anything from the jury. Yeah, yeah, you are. Let me get out of there first. So, yeah, you Mr. are. Mr. Brooks, please be respectful of the jury. They're and coming you should, out. You should be respectful we of are, what you asked me to do. You are addressing issues that are not related to evidence they in are. this case. They are. You asked me to do Mr. something, Brooks, I'll do it. please. And All then right. now it changes. Everyone can be seated. Thank you. This is ridiculous. Just like subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been proved. Just like you're making judicial determinations that you don't have to prove anything by law, which is a tacit agreement by you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the, please disregard the statements currently Why, being it's made true? by Mr. Brooks. Why? Because it's true. Correct statements of the law. They and are prove not that they're incorrect. Proof. In this case, where's the proof? Where's the legal proof? And you need to disregard them because you don't have it. And we are going to continue proof. with testimony, Mr. Brooks. I warn you, I don't, do I don't, not interrupt. I don't we identify will by have their a name. discussion about whether you will continue to be here. I don't All consent right. to being called their name for the record. Detective Carpenter, please stand, as is my practice when a witness is on the stand for a second day to be sworn in again. Go ahead, Teresa. Please raise your right hand. To the jury. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> and just for the record, please state your name for day two. Oh, yeah. Detective Jay Carpenter, J A Y C A R P E N T E R. All right, thank you. Go ahead, you may continue. Sir, yesterday when we ended for the day, um, we were at the point where we were talking about you interviewing the defendant, Daryl Brooks, um, on November 21st, 2021, at approximately 11 o'clock p.m. Do you recall that? Objection. I don't being called that name for the record. Objection is overruled. Yes, I do Grounds recall that. Overrule. Not relevant. Yeah, it is relevant. You are at this point, or I think last night, we asked for um, State's Exhibit 81 to be admitted into evidence, which is the defendant's statement provided to Detective Carpenter and Detective Stern on November 21st of last year. And Exhibit 81 has received permission to publish is granted. Objection. My um, notes reflect <coughs> that it's 25 minutes. That is correct. Um, let me get the exact time of it. Objection. I didn't provide any statement on the 21st. Jerry will disregard the statement by Mr. Brooks. He is not testifying. Therefore, his statements are not evidence. And my objection should be noted for the record. <coughs> Rather, the um, entire video is 25 minutes and 27 seconds. The state will be playing from four minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds. Thank you. Go ahead. <clears throat> So before it begins, I just wanted to clarify, we had talked about it last night a little bit. Um, what we are hearing today is the audio interview only, correct? Objection leading. Oh, overruled is foundational. She may ask it that way. Go ahead, you may answer, sir. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Should I do an X me anything? The stream? Darrell? Yes, sir. Jerry Borchowski? The FBI? FBI. Yeah. FBI. Hi, Mary. Yep. They're just kind of helping out because we're so short staffed tonight. So. Thank you. Yeah. 
That's all it is. How's your how's your, your shoulder, right? Your, is that yeah, you're... well, he said in four to six weeks I might have to get it because it's still something's wrong. I know, I know. You bang it up before or something? Nah, just it was just the way they slammed me. Okay. Hit the ground, kind of like went up. Boom, boom. That's where the knee well, came from. Knee but, well. okay. Yeah, but the shoulder, I, I know. I know something's wrong. Yeah. He said four to six weeks, the MRI won't be able to tell if anything's torn or anything like that. So. Okay. Okay. FBI, though. We, we help out our local partners all the time. This is just something that we're here Because <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, believe it or not, we, we work at NPD a lot. We, we come down here, so we're kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, like uh, Detective Carpenter yeah, said, like, we're... Y'all are uh, for real? The FBI yeah, for real. That's yeah. what this says, at least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm not trying to be funny, but this is the first time I've ever even seen an FBI agent in real life. Mm-hmm. Most we get that reaction from most. <laughs> no, because it's like, am I in a movie right now? Y'all don't, sure y'all not punking and pranking me or something? Yeah, but, uh, you don't need to let that yeah. freak you out or anything. Right. Like, I gotta yeah. leave you work, so, so we work around here. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. You live with her? No. What's her name? Your girlfriend's name? Her name is Erica Patterson. E R. How does she spell it? E R I K A. P A. Yeah, P A T T E R S O. Okay, and it's 4014 North 19th Street in Milwaukee. Do I have the right address? Yes, sir. Is that an apartment or a house? It's a house. Okay. What's the zip code there? Uh, 53209. Okay. Um, and last grade you completed in school? 12th. Okay. Yep. Graduated high school? Yes, sir. What school did you go to in Milwaukee? Riverside. Riverside? Yes, sir. Milwaukee Riverside Tigers. <laughs> I see you smile. You know about Riverside, man. I heard things. Uh, we kicked y'all back in football. Ah, uh, it was West Dallas. Oh no, I don't think we play Riverside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, I appreciate all the cooperation and all the good dialogue we've had, you know, to this point throughout. Um, you know, being that you're sitting here and you know, I had had some handcuffs on you before and all that jazz, Absolutely. you familiar with your legal rights? Yes, have I you am. ever had those read to you before? Yes, I have. Okay. So as you can see, they're written on this paper. So because, you know, if I was sitting here and talking to you on your couch, we wouldn't have to worry about this. But because you're here, not in your home, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a thing I got to read to you. Okay. And again, it's just something I got to read to you before I kind of get your side or hopefully get your side here and love to hear your side. Like to know what the rel is to say about okay, you know we got some people calling us saying this. You know, um, he said you made hundreds before. No, I wasn't driving. Someone thought you might have been. He had to get that warrant. He ended up calling a guy just to use his phone, kind of loitering around yeah, and just. It's disgusting. You know, how, nah, you up, how you ended up kind of being it? That's okay. what they say. No, no, no. no, no I was gonna say I, I, I knocked on his door. He used his yep, phone. Yep. Yeah. Right, but it probably wasn't him that called because he had his phone, but. Someone was concerned about something. So just trying to figure out what's going on down in that neighborhood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All I right, Jerome. kind of, you know, like I said, oh. I, I probably, that wasn't probably the best, but I was just like, I need it's... to get an Uber. Yep. I have money on my cash app card. Yep. So I'm not trying to rob anybody. Sure. I'm yeah. not trying to break it in. And obviously you can tell I'm not drunk. I'm not, yep. you know, under the influence of anything. So. Okay. All right. Um, so he's going to be good with us. Okay. All right. Um, in regards to these, Darrell, then, do you understand that you have the right to remain silent? Just answer everything with a yes or no. Yes, sir. Okay. And then I just write down your reply. Um, do you understand if you give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in court? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand you have the right to consult with an attorney and have an attorney present during any questioning? Yes, sir. Uh, do you understand if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by the court? Yes, sir. Understanding the above rights, uh, Darrell, are you willing to speak with me, us, primarily me? I'm the one that's going to be doing most of the talking, probably. Uh, I just want to know a little bit more about what's going on, just a little bit. Because like I'm, I told I'm you, I know very confused. little. I just know that, you know, you're down in this neighborhood, someone called, you know, they didn't know what you were doing down there and things like that. So... I got limited from their side, but I'm looking to see, you know, what you have to say about it. I'm looking to see, you know, maybe, maybe a lot of, maybe the caller was just on some BS down there. You know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. But I can't, I can't really show the court that if I don't have, you know, if I haven't talked to you. So that's why I'm here, just to kind of see what you got to say about it. Get your side of it. You know, running around a neighborhood's not, not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. Right, right, you know? right, right. Unfortunately, I wouldn't have had to do that if, I made better decisions with women. Yeah. But not gonna point the finger. Sure. I'm a grown man. I make my own decisions. So I'm not gonna point the finger at nobody. I just yeah. didn't think. Didn't think, yeah. yeah. What the hell? You want to speak with me, Darrell? Uh, not right now. So. Was a decision made to speak with Mr. Brooks the following day? The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, it was. Now, when you spoke with the defendant on the 21st, 
what did you have some general information as to casualties? Thank you. I'm grade? sorry for yes, that. I did. What information did you have at that point? At that point, not all the information was in yet, but I knew, um, as I stated in previous testimony, um, our emergency department was very full. Um, I knew there were significant injuries to many people. Um, I knew some were deceased. I did not know the exact number at that time. Thank you. Yeah, you need therapy for this one as you go. You had um, approximately <coughs> another couple minutes of conversations with Mr. Brooks Thank you. before you called it a night. Um, was he... <laughs> What was the vibe that you got from him during those couple minutes? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. It's the noise. The objection's overruled, you may answer. I would say friendly. I think <clears throat> when you heard the, the clip there, um, Mr. Brooks jokes about Riverside and football. The individual he was talking to at that time was Detective Stern. Um, as you can't obviously see him in the video. Um, I could sense, and I believe you can hear it in Mr. Brooks's voice in that clip. Oh, coffee. Um, it's early. The FBI put him on edge. It was unusual to see them. I could sense the nervousness. He did transition as I talked to him more throughout that clip into a more normal conversational tone again. But when I was speaking with Mr. Brooks casually throughout Seriously. the night, that was the type of tone um, he had with us. It was very friendly and he seemed, when it came to myself and Detective Stern, very comfortable speaking with us. Now you had stated your initial intent was to talk to him about loitering in the area <coughs> that he was arrested. Do you recall that? Objection. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Did Mr. Brooks at all talk to you about the loitering in terms of what the focus of your investigation was that night? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that night, leading the witness. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, the statements he made in there, um, you know, about did start with a bang. being in the area because he needed an Uber. Um, you know, he, he says more you know, to us about not knowing the area of Waukesha. He doesn't know the streets, things of that nature, and he just needed an Uber to get home. Um, so yeah, that was that was his reasoning for, for being down there, and he stuck to that reasoning the entire time. Direct your attention then to the next day. So, mm -hmm. Shrek, that, that night, was he transported to a Muskego Police Department? Yes, he was. And did you go to Muskego Police Department? Yes, I did. Um, did you transport him? So it was a dual transport. Uh, Officer Leha from the Waukesha Police Department responded to Waukesha Memorial Hospital in a, in a marked squad car that has a, uh, an appropriate rear backseat transport compartment. Mr. Brooks was placed in that car and myself and Detective Stern followed in a separate car. So once you get to City of Mosquito Police Department, do you do anything there? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Not the first night. Myself and Detective Stern stood by while some basic medical questions that were part of Mosquito Police Department's policy as far as holding a prisoner were asked of him. Um, I was there until Mr. Brooks was placed into his cell. Once Mr. Brooks was in his cell, I explained to him that I, me personally, would be returning the next day to speak with him more and give him more information about the investigation. Did Officer Leha end up staying at the Mosquito Police Department with the defendant? Objection. Strictly to you. Overruled. Yes, he did. Why was that? Objection, D. Overruled. That was Mosquito's request, being Mr. Brooks was... Although, so because of the transition and we did not have our own municipal lockup facility, um, we requested to use Muskego Police Departments and they allowed it. But being Mr. Brooks was technically in our custody, they requested that one of our officers stay um, there to do the monitoring and the jail. Trips. 
So do you return to the city and Muskego Police Department the next day, November 22nd, um, to speak with Mr. Brooks again? Yes, I did. Okay, so to be in court then, eh? You may answer. Yes, I did. Did you return with anyone? Um, I returned with Detective Ben Stern. Now, what was the plan for this interview? You had said the previous day the intent was to kind of start very low, just looking at loitering. Um, did you have a plan going into the interview on the 22nd? Objection. Leading. Overruled. I did. What was that plan? So the plan was different from the prior day. So the interview with Mr. Brooks on the 22nd didn't start till about a little afternoon that af that afternoon, 12, 11 p.m. to be exact. Around 8 a.m. that morning, there was a briefing with all officers that were involved where I learned some additional information. Um, one of the things I learned that morning was that there was a domestic abuse incident that had occurred between Daryl Brooks and Erica Patterson, something I was not aware of when I was with Mr. Brooks during the evening hours of November 21st. Um, there was also much more information at this point in regards to the parade incident. Um, as I had stated in my earlier testimony, it was very, very chaotic that first night um, between radio traffic and what I could hear going on down in the downtown. As I had stated, it was really unlike anything I've ever been involved in. But by Tuesday morning, the 22nd, we had narrowed it down to basically just Mr. Brooks, that there were not four people in this car. We were looking at one man. So he was now a suspect in the domestic abuse and driving in the parade. So I chose to begin the interview on the less serious matter, that being the, the battery charge that he was looking at with Erica Patterson. Now, you said Tuesday the 22nd. Um, <clears throat> Monday, excuse me. Okay, thank you. And um, what do you try to do when you're meeting with someone? Do you, do you try to establish any type of rapport with that person? Is that helpful? Do you, how did you approach this interview on the 22nd? Objection leading. Um, I'll sustain it to the form of the question. It's actually compound, if you could rephrase. How did you approach the question of Mr. Brooks on the 22nd? Objection, I don't consent to be in court that name. So when I began to speak with Daryl Brooks on the 22nd, um, I began with some very light conversation. I explained to Mr. Brooks that I had more information from the previous day. I explained to Mr. Brooks that his girlfriend at that time, Erica Patterson, had made some domestic abuse allegations against him that were physical in nature. I didn't indicate to him exactly what she said he did, but that there were physical allegations. Um, I explained to Mr. Brooks that there's always two sides to a story and that, you know, a lot of times in my experience as an officer, it, it can be about perspective. There's one, there's side A, there's side C, so to speak, and maybe B, somewhere in the middle can, can be your truth. Um, and I basically just implored him to be honest, I, I touched on the fact we had talked extensively the night before about things such as him enjoying baseball, him having watched the Packer game, him having been disappointed by the result of the Packer game. And in situations such as interrogations, I think it's always important to let a person know that obviously I'm an officer, but I'm a human being, as are they. And you want to try to not let them see that barrier and feel comfortable talking to you. I think in any interpersonal relationship in society, there needs to be rapport. And I try to establish that before getting into the specific details of the crime at hand. Now, you said that you had a briefing prior to going back to the same Mosquito Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Did you have, um, you said you had more information about the parade incident and also the domestic incident, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, overruled, his answer may stand. Next question. Did you know at that time prior to speaking with Mr. Brooks how many people had died during the parade incident? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, I did. And how many people was that at that time? Objection, leading. Overruled. At that point, it was five. Okay. 
So did you confirm again, personal information for the defendants um, before starting the interview? Yes, I did. Did you read the, or him, the Miranda form like you did the night before? Yes, I did. I'm gonna show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 174. Now, is that the Miranda statement form that you completed on November 22nd with Mr. Brooks? Objection, we. Yes, it is. And what yeah, time so is that gather. completed? 12, 11 p.m. Um, I, what exhibit is that? One eighty. Uh, one I know about my desperation okay. coffee. Um, and did you read that form to Mr. Brooks? Objection. Just say. Overruled. Yes, I did. And did you read that form to him in its entirety? Yes, I did. I'd ask that Exhibit 174 be moved into evidence. Objection. Brother Missy. Exhibit 174 is received. Now, when we look at Exhibit 174, it says spouse's name. It says Erica Patterson. Do you see that? Objection. Leading. Um. Hello, hello, hello. Sustained us with the form of the question. Hello. Did not pass the public. Hi, Natalie. Know, How's it going? Can you hear me? We've got an actual defense no, attorney here to, to give real no. real uh, um, context. There's a spot oh, in this form that says spouse's name. Is that filled in? <laughs> How's it He's going? It's crazy this and morning. It crazy. Okay. Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. It says Erica Patterson. Did he say that they were married? He did not. He said um, that was his girlfriend, however. And he indicated he had children. Oh, I've got chicklets in the crowd now. It's up. background foundational. <laughs> it's the witness may answer. The objections overruled. Yes, he did. How many children did he have? Objection leading. Overruled. Three. And you read each of the five rights that are listed on this form? Yes, I did. And did he agree to speak with you? Yes, ma'am, he did. Okay. I would ask that exhibit 174 be published to the jury. Objection. <laughs> the exhibit's already been received. Noting your objection, it's overruled. Permission to publish is granted. Now, as that form is coming up in the jury box, just for the, the jurors to see, um, when you initially had contact with the defendant that morning, did you verify <coughs> if he had been fed? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. And had he? been fed dinner the night before, breakfast that morning, lunch that afternoon. Objection Overruled. But she's not yes, even he had. anymore. And was he complaining about any physical injuries? Objection here, sir. Overruled. Uh, yes, he was continuing to complain about, <clears throat> excuse me, he was continuing to complain about um, the injury to his right shoulder, um, which he still at that time was asserting heard when um, officers at the time of his arrest body slammed him. Now, with regard to the second interview, the one that took place on November 22nd, was that recorded? I didn't see any body slam, by the way. Yes, Me either. And would it be fair to say that uh, recorded interview was four hours, 55 minutes and 30 seconds? Objection, usually. Overruled. Yes, that would be correct. Okay. And you had the opportunity to listen to that interview? Yes, I have. I'm going to go through that interview hey, not a um, breath. with you. I'm not going to play um, <laughs> the whole five hours, um, but just portions of that. I'll stop it during um, during specific clips that I'm providing, providing to Ms. Gussie, and we'll talk about it. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Before you do that, I'm told our interpreter will be here momentarily. And rather than you start, I think it would be best if we just take a short break till the interpreter's here. Is the witness here? Oh, I believe he was and coming at 10. Oh, he okay. That's fine. Then, then I appreciate that. What's the language interpreted? Spanish, Spanish or something else? Sorry for the interruption. I don't know what they Let need the interpreter if, for. He's here hmm. early. Okay. They were talking about it all morning, though. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Interesting. I'm not joking. They they said he's not familiar with the English language, and I thought they were talking about the defendant. <laughs> well, that would kind of track. 
Oh, he's uncorked some winners already today. He really has. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to review this later tonight. I'm excited. Okay. He's not here yet. Like okay, the morning. then we will keep going and just let me know when the witness gets here. Okay, you can take this a little bit off the screen. Oh, thanks, Kathy. If we can go to seven minutes and 30 seconds to eight minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah, there we go. He dropped in all of a sudden, all of a suddenly on us, <laughs> among others. He has such an interesting way of speaking. Um, is this the interview room that was at the San Mosquito Police Department? Yes, it is. Okay. And um, it's paused right now, but um, who's in that room? Overruled. The person in that room in the red t-shirt with the mask partially covering their face, longer braided appearing hair is Daryl Edward Brooks. <laughs> the same individual sitting to my left in this suit, jacket, shorter hair, and surgical mask. Okay. And the other two people depicted here? Uh, the person, as you would look to the screen to the left, is myself. And on the right is Detective Ben Stern. So again, going to seven minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> He gave a statement to the police? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's an idiot. Oh, and that was the big thing, too. The judge okay, keeps saying, sound you're going to open the door because he keeps asking him to play more. Okay. Oh, no. So it, now, is that's, it what, that's what went sideways because he just couldn't accept until eight or understand that. And the metal pieces on the, um, the little machine thing that comes around, they take them, they, they, the pieces go through like this little steamer type machine thing and then they paint it and then they come back around and we just take them off the hook and just put them in the box, load them up, put them back on the truck. Oh. It was four on, three off, so that was more ideal because that's a great schedule. I, I mostly have my children the back half of the week. Sure. But since since all this, I've been having them every day. So it was like, oh, there you kids? Mm -hmm. my, my son is grown, my daughter, my oldest daughter is 14, and my youngest daughter is 7. You said your son, oldest son's grown, how old is he? He's 18. That's not grown. Well, my son doesn't. Your son doesn't? My son doesn't. But, okay. All right. So, initially, what were you speaking with uh, Mr. Brooks about when he was describing... Um, Something with metal objection leading, and I do not know what that name overruled as to both objections. Just about work, he was uh, Mr. Brooks was explaining a job he had had prior. Uh, he indicated he was laid off due to the pandemic, um, so it was just general conversation about his work history. And um, he talked about his kids. Um, do you recall that? Yes. And his youngest kids, who did he say they lived with? Objection. The what is his relevance to this answer? Them establishing that he is who they say he is? Mr. Brooks was indicating they were living with him. However, uh, the investigation showed that not to be the case. Uh, of the two daughters, one lives down in Georgia in the Atlanta area, and the other lives in Iowa. Thank you. Now directing your attention to 14 minutes and 15 seconds into the interview. And I'd be playing that until 15 minutes and 48 seconds into the interview. It is currently at 14 minutes and 15 <coughs> seconds. If Can I have those uh, timestamps again, please? Sure. 14 minutes and 15 seconds beginning to 15 minutes and 48 seconds. Thank you. I ask that that be played at this time. Go ahead. We're not on your couch, then. I got to read it, okay? Um, and I know you have, you've heard it before, so you can't understand that. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions before I start for me? Only thing I want to know is, what in the heck am I being charged with anything? Well, she's making some, like I said, alleged allegations against you, kind of, you know, for being physical. So that's what, you know, if that's BS, that's what I'm looking to hear from you. Okay. Total BS. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of we couldn't track her down, so that's that's kind of where we're at. It's this typical back and forth stuff that guys like you go through with their baby mama all the time. And they're all, you know, there's a lot of guys out there in your spot. Oh, good you know? Lord. And a lot of times, you know, maybe it's, it's not always fair for them. But that's kind of what I, I wish they had them all to where people, if you do that shit, you should get in trouble.
trust her. Yeah. Like, why? You shouldn't be able to just be like, oh, I'm pissed off, so I'm going to yeah. call and do this. Yeah. Like, that. that's, why would you put me in that situation and then you know we're going to end up being together anyway? Yeah. Why would you do that? Trying to judge that credibility. Yeah. So and he's thinking so, he's arrested yeah, for slapping his girlfriend? That's why we're sitting in here with you to try to, to siphon through, sift through the BS, if that's what we got. And, and go for it. That makes sense? Yeah. All right. Girl, man. I said this last night too, didn't yeah. She gets drunk and think, remember I just said that she fucking acts a fool and I'm the one who pays for it. Yep. Can you tell the jury a little bit about this clip? Oh. So in this clip here, I'm just explaining to Mr. Brooks um, the background of the domestic abuse allegations that you know officers had received from Erica Patterson. Um, and that I was looking to get basically clarity on that, his side of the story on that, um, kind of him help me understand what aspects of it may or may not be true, and um, just walk me through what had occurred between between the two of them. Again, although we're approximately um, 15 minutes into the interview, have you mentioned anything about the Prey incident or any victims? Objection. The Overruled, mm -hmm. the witness may answer. I did not know that. I had not said anything about that at this point. And why was that? Yeah. So what I wanted to do with this interview, as I stated in my earlier testimony, uh, I wanted to start with the smaller things and get to the bigger things. Um, the parade mm -hmm. incident with... Nope, there's only one. ...the individuals and the loss of life was obviously very serious. After Natalie um, got on... The rest are Part exploded. of what I believe as an investigator <laughs> is very important. I do think there's another Except Wisco. Is gauging credibility. Yeah, there's, in, there's, in there's a couple more. One yeah. of the ways you do that is you there's need to be go. careful. Obviously, at some point, if I'm going to take Mr. Brooklyn, I have yeah. to tell him what he's being charged with. <laughs> but I want to be very careful in giving too much information early on um, so that I'm not leading him, so that I'm not giving him the opportunity based on information to create lies. <laughs> Um, I want to see how he reacts to things to help me gauge whether he's being truthful. And I found starting with the smaller aspect and seeing how truthful he was with that could help lead me into the more serious allegation and see if he was going to be truthful about those things as well. Now, as I watched the, the snippet of the video that we showed, at one point you had indicated, you know, Guys like you get, you know, get into these kind of situations with girls like that or something to that effect. Do you recall that interaction in this video? Yes, I do. What do you mean by that? Or what were, strike that. What were you trying to establish by making that statement? Again, with, as I had stated in my earlier rapport. testimony, part of what I believe is important is simply building a rapport with an individual. Again, yep. you always have with any individual in any interrogation, um, there's the natural barrier that can occur with them seeing you as a law enforcement officer. Um, I've been doing this job for 18 years. Um, that was not intended on any way on my part to suggest to Mr. Brooks that everything his girlfriend was saying was a lie. I just wanted him to feel comfortable telling me the truth, whatever that truth was, um, man to man or person to person, human being to human being. Lying. Um, stretching your attention to um, 30 minutes and 26 seconds and playing this clip until 40 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, let's do that now. Objection. Um, wasn't it just said we was 15 minutes in the interview? Why is it playing from 30 minutes? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled again. That's 30, 26, you said? 30, 26 to 40, 30. To 40, 30. Thanks. That's good. <laughs> thank you for thank you for that analysis, Andrew. So, what brought you to walk and try yesterday? How did you get out here? I was meeting up with a friend to watch the Packer game. Okay. That's the only reason why I was, was out here. Where did you go to watch the game? 
to a friend named uh, Stephanie. Her house, a bar, a house. And yeah, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable or anything, but what's the address there? What's your I have on? no idea about what we saw. I don't know the street. What was I it don't... near? I know you had to see something near it. Uh, so what was it near? Like a gas station. Have you been to the house before? No. Never before? No. What's Stephanie's last name? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. When did you guys set this up? Um, Maybe a couple of days ago. Okay. Like I said, I, I have a few friends. I have a few friends in Milwaukee that have people out here, so okay. it's not. I don't like I said last night. I don't know the streets in Waukesha. It's not where I usually hang out at, so I I couldn't say well this street, this street, and this. But, you know, I couldn't. All right. Just to feel like a friend of yours or like a friend of a friend. A, a friend of a friend, mutual okay. friend. And what you your last like, name was? I have no idea. How long have you known her? That was my first time meeting her. So, so, how did you get the number to know the house to go to? A friend. A friend. <laughs> so, how did you get to her house? My friend. I went with my friend. Okay, who's that? Uh, my friend. I don't really want to say his name. I don't know if that's going to incriminate him in anything. So. Okay, so. Because it's an imaginary friend. Go with this. How did you come? He doesn't make sense. I know you saw her yesterday in Waukesha. Because we talked to her. Now, I don't know everything that went on, and I'm not saying I believe everything she told the other officers. How did you come to meet with her in Waukesha, one? And two, you say you don't know Waukesha, but where did you meet her? A gas station, a park? I know you met her. Where did you meet her? What what happened yesterday? Yeah, so, Because if this is BS, like you say, and I know you met her, what happened? I met her. What happened you met her? Where did you meet her? Let's start with that. By a gas station. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Hells yeah. What I was supposed to be getting some money from her. How did okay. For what? Um, it was the rest of my money that she had of my No, we're actually your real friend. <laughs> How much? Um, it was supposed to be three hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. And what did she? Why did she have it? Why? Why was she holding? Well, she it? she had been holding it for me for a few weeks now. But like I said, I hadn't seen her. She had seen right. Why was she holding? Why did she have it? Why was she holding it for you? She was just holding it for me because I told her to hold it for me. But this was it didn't have anything to do with. This was weeks ago. She had been holding it. And because I had no contact with her, I couldn't tell her. So sweet. My mom wasn't going to let her come to the house to bring it. Mm-hmm. And I told her, look, man, if I'm going to be out there, I'll meet up with you and, and get the money. But I'm not hanging yeah. out with you. I'm not having sex with you. That's all we get around here, I'm like, oh, you want to keep? I'm like, I'm not going to do you know. that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be around you. I get that. I understand that. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not supposed to be around you. I love you to death, man. You're my baby mama. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be like a hangout thing. I told her, I'm like, I'm out here. And she's like, oh, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? And I'm like, look, I'll meet up with you to get the money and, you know, give you a hug or whatever. But she was like, well, gee, I need something. I'm like, no, we can't do it all, all that. I'm not going to have sex with you. I'm not going to hang out with you. Oh my God! Classic abuser. The meeting up. Did you did you talk to her on the phone, Facebook Messenger, text message? I talked to her. She, I don't think she said anything about that. So just, I mean, if she's BS, how did you? How did yeah, because I didn't. With her? I didn't. She. This is what she does. If well, she hold on one second. Hold on one thing at a time. How did you set the meeting with her? How do I verify? That's what. That's what I'm saying. She. If she can't get in touch with me. That's what she'll do. She'll go to social medias and do all this and try to okay. talk to people and all this and that. I got in contact with her through a mutual friend that we both know. And I was like, okay, tell her I'm out in Walkershaw or whatever, and I'll meet up with her to get the money. And then she put us on the call. And she was just like, where are you at? Wait, huh? Yeah. And she was just like, where are you at? I'm like, look, I don't know where I'm at. 
do you still got that money? She's like, yeah, I want to give you the money, and I want to, I want to do this and do that. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hang out with you. I'm gonna meet up with you, get the money, give you a hug and kiss. We'll talk later. Was it still daylight? It was still daylight. It was still daylight. So this was. At least setting up the timeline for them now. I mean, he knows he did it. Why is he talking to them? So many people talk. It's so ridiculous. I want to see you. I ain't seen you in like a month. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to lie and say, man, that's my baby mama. I love this woman. But I can't hang out with you. I can't do anything with you, you know, that type of thing, deal, and whatever the case may be. But yeah, that. And this is on your cell phone? The three way call, obviously, it's your cell phone because you're not on right? My friend's phone. Friend's phone. Yeah. But yesterday, so do you have your phone? No. That's what I'm saying. No. So who is the friend whose phone you were using to talk to to get her on a three way call? I don't want to say his name because I don't want to. I'm afraid you're right, Mitch. Okay, I guess. So you saw her, though. That's exactly it. He thinks he's smarter. That's how a lot of people get caught up. How did the conversation with her end? With me walking off? And her being pissed off that I didn't want to hang out with her. That is a darn good question. I said, look, I'm not supposed to be around you. I'm gone. Okay. When she whose said, car oh, did you use to get out she there? said, I didn't, I didn't have a car. No, whose car did you use to get to Waukesha? My friend, my friend is the one that said he was going to go hang out and watch the Packer game. I said, I'm going to go with. Okay. Whose car did you use to get out to Waukesha? I didn't use anybody's car. Where does your friend live? My friend lives in Milwaukee. So you, you didn't walk to Waukesha. Whose car no, did you guys use? My friend. I just said my what friend. What type of car is he? I'm just trying to figure out how you got here. Yeah, I know, but it's been like you're trying to like, spin me up or something. Like, I'm just asking how you got here. Whose car did you drive out here? I didn't drive at all. Oh, what sure. What car did you come out here in? My friend. Okay, right. What kind of car is it? So here's the thing. Darrell. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, she's coming at us. I told her she's talking about some domestic related issues. Okay. Um, you know, and I don't know if she's on BS. I don't know if she's not. I'm telling you. Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't want you to get. Yeah. Cause you know, hold on. Let me finish. You know, I don't entirely know all that. Okay. I'm just right now trying to figure out how you get out here. So I got to step out with my partner for a minute. Just relax. Don't, I want you to get you all nervous. Okay. But you know, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but I, I don't think when you meet her out in Waukesha and you're not from Waukesha, I think a reasonable question is to ask, how did you get out here? Yeah. Whether you drove, someone else drove. And if so, when you got out here, what type of car you were in? So just, um, every hour or so, my boss, he knows we're out here. I just got to call him and say, yeah, we're talking. I'll call you back later. Just got to step out throw in a line with him and we'll come back. Just chill out here, enjoy your soda. We'll be right back. All right? Sound good? Okay. So we done talking or? No, 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 no. Just chill out. We'll be back. Just got to make that call. Just got to make that call. That check-in call. All right? In the middle of the conversation? Well, do you want to tell me about the car? He definitely can't say he was caught coerced. Well, I'm not saying you were coerced. I'm just trying to figure out how you got out here. Well, I'm just saying he was coerced. He's trying to keep them talking. You got to call him. I can come back, but I just. All I, listen, I'm, I'm willing. Well, that was all to voluntary. Carpenter, you've been straight up with me. You've been straight up with me, right? Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is I just want to know what I'm looking at and if I can just notify my girls. That's it. I don't have a problem with talking to you guys at all. I just want to know what. Am oh, I my God. To? That's what we have to start. She called about some domestic abuse related stuff. Now, I didn't talk to her myself. I told you that at the start. You said she was crazy. We talked about Y'all know that. Y'all talked yeah. to the woman. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, other I apologize. You talk. Slow down. Right. officers that we listened to the answer. Slow down, Did, did she look beat up? Did she look like, dude, Darrell, like, come, come on me. now, man. Slow down, dude. All right? We can't explain it to you if you keep talking over us. You know what I'm saying? All right? I didn't talk to her. I didn't see her. Okay? Now... Okay, with regard to that clip, sir, um, we 
we have a lot of talk about her, meaning her. Who who is her? Objection leading. Overruled. The her in this case is Erica Patterson. So you, did you have some conversations with Mr. Brooks before this clip about his relationship with Ms. Patterson? Objection leading. I do <laughs> consent to being called that name. The objections are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, at the end of this video, um, not the end of the video, but the end of this clip, again, he is saying, what am I looking at? Do you recall him saying that in this video? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. Was this a theme throughout this five-hour video? This Objection. is leading, actually. Overruled the witness may answer. But she's yes, not listening to him anymore. That was so leading. Oh, yeah. Did but he, he, he misses all the obvious objections and then makes them when they don't apply. stated initially no. when he came into the room, he had complained about some shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Did that continue throughout the interview? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. So I would say what happened is it went on and off. So at this point here, um, the interview at this point in time was what I would describe as laid back. Um, a lot of it was simply getting background about the overall relationship between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Patterson. Um, during that time, he was fine. Um, he was moving his arms, as you could see in this clip. He wasn't complaining about pain. Um, what I noticed and made me question the legitimacy legitimacy of the injury before ever actually even seeing the body cam is i noted at times of stress later in this interview as i continue to push on a vehicle um i can see as you could see here i believe it can be seen here in this interview talking about the car made him uncomfortable complaints about the pain would suddenly come back how about the uh request to be told what he's looking at. Did you see any correlation between that and what was occurring during the interview? Objection, speculative. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, that, um, as I say, that continued throughout the entirety of the interview. And you know, really at this point was a little unusual because um, right now he had been told he was looking at the domestic, the parade hadn't come up. so. Uh, a reasonable person, I believe, at this point of the interview knew what they were looking at. They were looking at a domestic abuse incident. Um, why simply asking him how he got out here as far as transportation made him nervous was um, alarming. An example of him, you said that you had seen him using his arms a little bit in this clip. Is that correct? Objection leading. So, <clears throat> to the form of the question. Um, you had stated that, um, what observations did you make during this clip about the use of his right arm? He would move it from side to side. So, I mean, both his arms would come out like this and move. Um, he would make mannerisms when he was speaking with both arms that were, to me, what a person would do when they're normally conversing. And um, it would seem unusual to make those movements if he was, in fact, in as much pain as he was claiming to us he was in. Now I'm going to just for the left the record reflect that um, when you had indicated he'd move his arms this way, you moved both your right and left arm out um, parallel to the ground at about shoulder level, would that be accurate? Yes, it would. So the previous stuff he just said would be a good speculation of that. minutes and 15 seconds. He doesn't know to make it. That was an objection of speculation, but he never seconds. made it. So a very short clip. Go ahead. He's just randomly that saying stuff. She makes this complaint when she gets you back. Yeah, and it's and like, why are you doing this to me? And I, I promise you, I promise you, my right hand to God Almighty on the throne with Jesus next to his side. The woman is going to sit oh there and say, I was drunk. 
I was mad, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, now I got to go through everything just for you to do that. Why did you do this to me? She thinks she's going to come back to us. So we saw some motions with his arms during this clip. Would that be an accurate statement? Jason, relevancy. Overrule the witness may answer. Could you explain to the jury what you observed? So I observed uh, Mr. Brooks move his arms to his side above his head, um, his right arm almost fully above his head at points. Um, quite frankly, showing that arm seemed to have full range of motion. Now, you had testified yesterday. Um, you had seen a video or a still shot from a video, and you identified the defendant driving a red SUV. Do you recall that testimony? Objection leading. Um, over mm -hmm. the witness may answer. Yes, I do. And when the defendant was telling you about his friend bringing him out in a tan Kia, I think he said, um, did you believe that to be true? Objection. Um, sustained. It's for the jury to determine credibility. Did the you? There you go. Did you ever see any video of the defendant driving in a tan Kia during the time of the parade? Objection. Here's the rule. Well, the witness may answer that. No, I did not. Directing uh, the video to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds, <coughs> and playing until one hour, 18 minutes, and two seconds. Before we go to this clip, I know we have the witness, I've been told, and the interpreter uh, available. So I would like to uh, put further testimony and watching of these clips on hold. <coughs> Um, we do need to take a witness out of order in order to accommodate the interpreter that the court has arranged for. So, Detective Carpenter, you may uh, be excused momentarily. <clears throat> and then if Mr. Ryan would accompany the witness, this will be Mr. Uh, Juan Marquez being called by Mr. Brooks. Yeah. And here goes our interpreter. N Natalie, did you did you see him? Uh, did, did you see him rip up the order on jurisdiction yesterday? No, Brandon told me about it. I didn't get to see Let's it. Let's do this. This is fun. It's very short. Tomorrow morning. All rise for the jurors, please. Oh my gosh. Look at this pathetic look. So pathetic. And he does these things in front of the jury. He's making sure that the camera gets through. The witness stand? So pathetic. Yep. I will be covering this tonight. <laughs> I'm going to have to. I mean, if you or I did that when contempt all day long, contempt, there's no yeah, way. Right away. The interpreter sworn first. Do you swear that you will interpret to the Swear the interpreter first and then the witness. In accordance with the standards prescribed by law, Code of Ethics for Court Interpreters. In Wisconsin yeah. guidelines for court interpreting? I do. Certified Spanish <laughs> interpreter Patrick Ryan. Thank you. And Mr. Marquez, would you please raise I'm your right hand and be sworn by my clerk? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help us out? Say yes. Please have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have an instruction to read to you. No matter what language people speak, they have the right to have their testimony heard and understood. You are about to hear a witness in which an interpreter will translate for one of the witnesses. The interpreter is required to remain neutral. The interpreter is required to translate between English and Spanish accurately and impartially to the best of the interpreter's skill and judgment. 
The evidence you are to consider is only that provided through the official court interpreter. Although some of you may know the non-English language used, it is important that all jurors consider the same evidence. Therefore, you must base your decision on the evidence presented in the English translation. You must disregard any different meaning of the non-English words. You must evaluate interpreted testimony as you would any other testimony. That is, you must not give interpreted testimony any greater or lesser weight than you would if the witness had spoken English. Keep in mind that a person might speak some English without speaking it fluently. That person has the right to the services of an interpreter. Therefore, you shall not give greater or lesser weight to a person's translated testimony based on your conclusions, if any, regarding the extent to which that person speaks English. I'm going to use that With instruction. That, sir, the first thing I'm going to ask for that next time is to state and spell your first and last names for the record. Juan Marquez. Juan Marquez. J U A N J U A N M A R Q U E Z M A R Q U E Z. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. You may question this witness. Uh, good morning, Mr. Marquez. Uh, You were at the parade on November 21st, 2021. Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, good Lord. Through an interpreter. And do you recall who, who you were there drink, with that but, day? Uh, with my wife and with my son. And were you marching in the parade that day? Say yes. This is his witness. Do you remember who you were marching with? Was it a uh, particular group? Un grupo particular. Say yes. Do Wait, you have recall who that group was? Se acuerda quién quién era el grupo con el cual estaba desfilando? Say yes. <coughs> Yeah, I don't get this. Did they agree to go out of order? That they seems must unlikely. Have. You feel something no, they must hit your leg? Interpreter availability. Yeah. The state has arrested. That's correct. That's I mean, correct. It would make sense, but he's so crazy. I'm surprised it happened. And do you remember what that <laughs> was? A vehicle. And did you see the vehicle? Your vehicle? No. No. Thank you, Brina. Maybe I should watch the trial instead of laughing at my did chat. Did you uh, <laughs> go to Freighter Hospital? Yes. We got, we got to the right answer anyway, on our own, kind of, sort of. <laughs> And were you inter interviewed by any law enforcement at that time? <laughs> yes. Do you recall if it was uh, regular officers or FBI? FBI. FBI. <clears throat> Do you recall telling them that the truck was black? Grounds. Um, the objection is sustained as to leading. Please rephrase your question. Do you remember what color you told them the truck was? I don't remember. Would it refresh your recollection? So it would be fair to say you don't recall seeing anything at that time? No. No?
And did you at any time file a claim related to this incident? En algún momento está hecho un reclamo con respecto a este incidente? No recuerdo. I don't remember. Filing the claim is part of his soft sit nonsense. And he just won't give it up. Do you know if anyone you were with filed a, a claim related to this incident? Yeah, the police department. <laughs> right. I don't know. Now's a good time to object to relevance and stop him. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Irrelevant. Yes. Good for you, man. Any reason why you wouldn't file a claim since you considered yourself an injured party? Uh, there's an objection. It's sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Could, could you repeat the question? You don't need to answer. Could you repeat the question, please? Please rephrase, Mr. Brooks. <laughs> It's kind of hard to rephrase. Oh. Shouldn't have fired your lawyers then. Did you intend on uh, filing a claim related to this case? Objection. Uh, Hold on, there's been an objection. The ground. Your Honor, first of all, I, this witness testified he doesn't recall filing a claim, so I'm not sure what the relevance then would be of the question. The question was, did he intend to? I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Do you recall at any time filing a police report? Yes. And was that with uh, local law enforcement, if you recall? I don't remember. Did anyone, uh, did any law enforcement from that report, follow up with you at any time? Yes. And do you recall what agency that was? No. No. Do you recall at any time being notified that you could possibly testify in this incident? Could you repeat the question? Sure. Um, at, do you recall at any time being notified that it was a possibility that you could testify in this incident? No. No. Uh, were you ever subpoenaed in relation to this incident? <laughs> 
Was it that along the lines of court here? The Holy Spirit does he didn't he subpoena him? Yeah. Yes. Do you recall who you re uh, received this subpoena from? Se acuerda de quién recibió la citatoria de corte? Del distrito de la oficina del fiscal. From the office of the district attorney. And do you recall when that was? Se acuerda cuándo fue? Mes, un mes y días. A month and a few days. And following being subpoenaed, or following, rather, to strike that back. Um, after receiving the subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at any time after? Después de recibir entonces el citatorio, recibió un tipo de seguimiento por medio de la oficina fiscal después del incidente? Sí. Yes. Do you recall whom you spoke with? Se acuerda con quién habló? Susan. Susan. Would that be referring to Attorney Opper who is seated at this table? Uh, Se refiere a Susan Opper que está sentado en esa mesa? Sí. Yes. And were you at any time uh, informed of a plaintiff in this incident? Objection of relevance. Sustained. Were you at any time notified that there was a plaintiff in this incident? Objection Grounds. of relevance. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. Here we go, down the Southern Citizen Road. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this incident? Objection Brown. relevance. The objection is sustained. The witness does not need to answer. Do you recall ever seeing, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> do you ever call, <clears throat> sorry. Do you recall ever seeing or reading a complaint in this matter? Not relevant. No. No. Going back to the, the actual incident, would it be fair to say that at the time you were you were very confused? Could you repeat the question? Uh, going back to the time of the incident at the parade, would it be fair to say that you were confused at the time? 
Sí, no sé. ¿Se puede decir que usted estaba confundido en ese tiempo? No. No. Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? ¿Hay alguna razón por la cual usted no se acuerda de ver algo? ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Any reason why you don't recall seeing anything? ¿Alguna razón por la cual usted no se acuerda de ver nada en ese tiempo? No vi el vehículo. I did not see the vehicle. Solo pasó. It just passed by. So the interpreter needs to make a clarification on, on the, his last response. If I can inquire, cuando te dice que 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 pasó el vehículo, eso quiere decir que que ocurrió el incidente o que el 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 vehículo pasó por usted. Que es cuando usted dice pasó pasó el vehículo o que había pasó como ocurrió. Ocurrió me pegó y, uh, y pasó yeah, rápido. For clarification, um, the interpreter inquired if he meant the vehicle passed by or if the incident happened. Uh, the defendant, the interpreter for clarification, the interpreter would like to say that he meant that it just happened, that the vehicle just hit him, rather than, I believe the interpreter translated what he said as it passed by. What he meant to say is that it actually happened rather than passed by. So for that point of clarification, for the record. Thank you. Good interpreter. <laughs> Excellent. That's what they're supposed to do if they need to clarify something. And thank you, Natalie, for holding it down. Oh, I didn't do anything while you were gone, but happy to. I had one of those status hearings you get. I, I knew it would be short. It was productive and short. Also, for clarification. I got this, one of those right before I, I came on here. <laughs> You don't recall actually seeing the vehicle. También, sí, vamos a estar practicando por el acta. No se acuerda que vio el vehículo. A little. No. No. No further questions. No más preguntas. Any questions, Attorney Basie? Briefly. Good morning, Mr. Rakez. Buenos días, señor. Good morning. On November 21st of last year, were you walking with the Catholic communities of Waukesha? <laughs> no, that's not asked and answered. That's correct. Hold on. What was the objection? You have to speak up. I couldn't hear what you said. I have a cold, so I can't. Mr. Brooks, was there an objection? So I can yeah, yes, there was an objection. Oh, I can't even remember now. Well, if you were objecting on relevance, it's relevant. His answer may stand. He objected on asked and answered. Mr. That was wrong. If you hear the word objection, please wait until I rule on the objection before you answer. Thank you. Go ahead. So we did it. answer the question? Sí. Yes. Thank you. Gracias. You were with your wife and your son? Estaba con su esposa y su hijo. Sí. Yes. And your son's name is David Marquez? Objection sí. leading. Overruled. You called the witness. The state may lead. Go ahead and answer. It's cross-examination. <laughs> Go ahead and answer, sir. Sí. Yes. <laughs> You testify that at some point you were struck by a vehicle. Objection. Overruled. You may answer. Sí. Yes. Did you have any warning before you were struck by the car? Objection. Hearsay. 
Me pongo de evidencia por evidencia. Overrule. The witness may answer. So many times. No. No. Did you hear a horn? Me too. Jason. You're saying. Overrule. The witness may answer. No. No. Sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 161. Go ahead. Do you, can you see that picture on the screen in front of you? Yes. And do you see the approximate area where you landed after the vehicle struck you? Objection leading. Overrule the statement lead. It's not their witness. Go ahead and answer, sir. So when he's so I can lead too if it's not my lead. No. no. Well, hold on. We'll get to that later. There's been an objection. I'm overruling it. Go ahead and re ask your question. No, dummy. You can lead on cross, but you don't understand it anyway. Right. He doesn't get the whole concept. See. Yes. The um. I'd ask that uh, this. It's Exhibit mind blowing. The admitted to evidence, which is 161, and published to the jury. Objection. Um, we can't even see. We can't even see who who is what, what exactly is the state referring to. You can't even see who it is. Oh, That's not the basis for an objection. Um, this is going to be over grounds, as you like to say. Attempt to testify, but if the state could just ask. Uh, a few more foundational question or questions, please. Certainly. What, when you met with the state, did you review some video of the parade? Objection hearsay. Overruled the witness may answer. That is not hearsay. Yes. And after reviewing that video, were you able to determine a pro the area in which your body landed? after you were struck by the car objection hearsay and leading overruled as to both you may answer sir yes and do you see that area on this exhibit objection leading. overruled the witness may answer Sí. Yes. I'd ask that this uh, and then an attorney be admitted to evidence and published for the jury. Objection. What's the relevancy? Uh, the objections are noted. They are overruled. And Exhibit 161 is received. Permission to publish is granted. And I've been, it's indicated that that is now being seen in the jury uh, box. Sir, the screen in front of you is a, a touch screen. Can you circle the area in which you believe you landed? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. You say where they believe. You know you don't. The witness may answer. Say, yes. Can you do that now? If we can take a snapshot of that. I don't know what Mr. Brooks just mumbled, but it's not his turn to answer, ask questions. There was no objection. The jury will disregard that. And this would be exhibit one. Disregard those random eight. mumblings. And we'll screen capture that exhibit 161A has been captured. Are you moving that in? I am. And exhibit 161 is received. 61A. Thank you. And you see anyone that you recognize standing in that area? Objection leading. <laughs> Overruled. The state may lead. It's cross examination of your witness. So sir. I can lead on uh, cross examination. Then. I direct your attention to 906 11 sub 3, sir. On cross -examination. 
I'm not going to answer that. Go ahead. This uh, is what you so may answer. Oh, my God. My if this I don't understand something. The jury will disregard means. this comments being made by Mr. Brooks. Judicial determination. Okay. Go ahead and answer the question if you recall it, sir. ¿Me puede repetir la pregunta? Could you repeat the question? Yes. <clears throat> do you see, actually, do you see David, um, your son, in okay. that picture? Objection. That was sí. Yes. And is he wearing... So my objection is not going to be noted. The objection is overruled. The state chose to ask a different question. That's fine. <clears throat> and is he seated... Um, near some blue chairs wearing a blue jacket. Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Chair. Yes. And sir, is that you laying down and you can see in this um, picture your legs and they're hanging <laughs> into the roadway? Objection leading. Witness may answer. Overruled. Chair. Yes. Now, is that where you were walking when you were struck from behind? Objection leading. I, I'm going to lose my mind answer. with leading. He's, I was about to say he's going to drive me crazy. No. Objecting to no. leading during cross. How far from the position that you recalled yourself to be at when you were walking did you land? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Me opongo a la su preferencia. Anulada. Puedes contestar la pregunta. Entre 15 a 20 pies. Between 15 and 20 feet. So your body flew through the air between 15 and 20 feet. Is that Objection what your testimony leading. is? Yes. Sorry, I didn't rule on the objection, but it is overruled and his answer may stand. I'm going to bust a blood vessel. Was David also uh, struck... By a vehicle during the parade? Yes. Did he re he received injuries as well? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. Can you describe what your injuries were, sir? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. What were they? Objection. Leading. Overruled. La fibula. My fibula. Y ligamentos. And ligaments. Your fibula was broken? Objection. Speculative. Overruled as to both. The opposite, yes, sir. opposite of speculative. Sí. Yes. And you had torn ligaments? Objection leading. Overruled. Did you say that in the question before? Sí. Yes. And were those both in the same leg? Objection leading. Sí. Sorry, yes. over, overruled. If we yeah, of course. just wait when there's an objection, um, I'm overruling it. It's relevant. It's not leading. The witnesses' answers may stand. I mean, yeah, you overrule every objection. And the jury will disregard the additional commentary made by Mr. Brooks at this time. Judicial misconduct at its finest. She's going to get annoyed yeah, with him very, like very soon. Answer. Objection. Accent. Answer. Overruled. You may answer. My left leg. Did you have to have surgery on that leg? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Yes. Just one? Two. That's not going to work. Mr. Brooks, you are advised to stop with the commentary. No, I'm going to say what I want. You called this witness. I'm going to take a break right now. And I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was coming. All right. What you're you doing is judicial misconduct. Wow. Judicial this is, misconduct. He's going to get held in contempt. But you oh don't want my the God, jury to Mike. hear the truth. That's not fair to the jury. They have a right to hear everything. That is not how it goes, Mr. Brooks. No, he's you can't go. do that. He's got to go to timeout. It's, he's set for the penalty box. Yeah. Fix. 
fix the trial because you don't She's want already to tell told him. Injury. She's going to hold Mr. him in contempt. Please stop. No, ain't no please. You are nothing. being disruptive. Ain't you no are please. being disrespectful. Yeah, you always going to find some reason to down. say somebody's being disruptive because they want the truth to be out there. Man, quit it. Oh, You're she is not your judge. judge. I'm advising you like that, that continued interruptions will result in you forfeiting your right to be okay, present in this court. Under what under what law in fact can you do that? Illinois versus Allen. Okay, sir. but the fourth the fourth uh, option that you made up that's not even in the uh, law. Mr. Because you can't do that. I need to make a by law you can't do that. I need to make and you know you can't. All right, I'm going to um, excuse everyone. Mr. Brooks is being removed from the courtroom. He will. Continue in the neighboring courtroom. Uh, uh, please make sure he has his objection sign and a pad of paper. So is that so that he can so is that holding me in contempt? And I will make a ruling when I no, just, she's just removing you from uh, the are courtroom. You holding me in contempt? So nice. Is that civil yeah. or criminal? You want to be held in contempt. Well, there goes that until they get the shuffling oh, and get him into oh, the Oh, he deserved it. Yeah. This nice man is talking about ha having two surgeries on his leg and his child being struck by a car driven by this guy. Mm -hmm. and, and he and he's acting like that. Oh, but but this it, is how he acts when the you know, the, it's all a show to cover up the crap that he did. You know, this is how he acts with the worst witnesses for him. He's always on some sovereign citizen crap and starts interrupting stuff. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, he he was getting crushed. The, the guy was just starting to say, you know, you know, because I do injury work, and he said he had two two surgeries and a, a fracture. So that I don't know, but it makes me think that this guy had hardware implanted in a revision. That's just my guess, and that's a bad injury and torn ligaments, ligament involvement. That is a bad injury. Really bad. Yeah, really, really bad. This and, is and he wants sad. and he wants to object to leading. On cross. Oh, God. Uh, to be, and I think Mike and I have been just completely clear on this, and so is the judge, but that is the point of cross examination. The point <laughs> is, that is the whole point of cross examination. He himself, on direct, has asked plenty of leading questions, and they kind of let that go. But yeah. on cross, you are allowed to ask leading questions. So it's just, and I think it's that way, like in multiple countries that have this type of judicial system. So I am just, it's it blow, it's blowing my mind that he thinks he is so right, yet he is so fundamentally wrong. And it must yeah. be maddening for the poor judge to be like, this is just the law and you're disrupting the trial just because you don't like the way the law is. Yep. I, I mean, it, you, you certainly can ask open ended questions on cross if you feel like it. But if you are, you're doing it wrong. Pretty much. I mean. Wow. So he's he's getting thrown out. All right, let, let, let me go back. I just wanted to check in. Yeah. Well, they just they just went to this on me. Yeah, because they they kick out the reporters and stuff whenever they're moving him from one place to the other. But they'll bring them back. They'll bring back in the reporters and they'll turn the camera back on the judge eventually. So they're they're, they're we have we have a jury room in ours and we send we send him to the jury room, but it sounds like they're sending him to the courtroom next door. Yeah, he's in a because it has the complete capacity to like project what's happening in the courtroom to him, and then he can hold up an objection sign, and then they can mute him. See, there he is. They can mute him in order to. Uh, this, no, this makes sense. Yeah, so that's uh, that. Whenever he's been kicked out, the trial has continued. That's where he is. A completely different courtroom. He can still fully participate. Um, but if he just won't stop talking, they can turn him off so that the trial can continue. It, it looks like he's got cuffs. I, I'm, I wasn't paying attention, but it looks like he's got cuffs on now. And I don't think he did before. He does whenever they transport him. They'll take the cuffs off his hands, but not the shackles off his feet. Oh, he has shackles on his feet the whole time? The whole time, yeah. Oh, good Lord. Well, this... Yeah. We knew this was coming. He's, I mean, he kicked off the, the morning just, you know, worse, worse than ever. Acting a fool. Acting a fool. And then, and then here we get it. Finally, we were all losing it right there. They're just, <laughs> I'm just unraveling. I mean, you know, you showing me him tearing up the court's order. He's just so disrespectful. Oh my yeah. God. Like you said, any one of us would have been with a different judge. He would have been held in contempt for that. Yep. For tearing up her order. 
And I, and from oh. what my husband told me, she was telling him like, hey, read it. You know, you have such a problem with the jurisdiction, read it. And he refused to read it too. Just yeah. so the height of lunacy. Well, I mean, she's, I mean, he, he could be held in contempt every day for his actions, but she's mm. just, tr I, I don't know if she'll get there, but she's just trying to get through this thing. That's it. The, That's the it. idea being, it, it's a high high probability of conviction here, and he's going away for the rest of his life. Why are we Why are we slapping around with with contempt? And I actually understand that. But at some point, you have to. Yeah, I agree with you that that's the reason why I'm just wondering at what point does I don't know what holding him in contempt is going to do because the purge provision will be what behave yourself in court, you know? Yeah. And it'll just cause a delay. And so instead of doing that, she can just move him to another courtroom, shut him down. He can hold up his objection signs and then sign and then keep the trial going. I'm just yeah, wondering I mean, about appellate review at this point. I don't know. Like he's, it, it, but the fact that a defendant purposely prejudices themselves in front of the jury is not a basis for appeal. There's multiple cases about that. Like if the defendant is of their own accord acting out so that they can upset the jury and they're hoping to throw the case somehow and then maybe get it overturned on appeal, the appellate courts see right through that and they are not going to overturn his case for that reason. So he can keep yelling and screaming all he wants. It's only hurting him. Well, yeah, I mean, she could, she's certainly justified in taking the measure, put him back in his cell and don't even allow him to participate. She could hold him in contempt and do that. But that is, that is a still not good, but a better issue for appeal. I think that if she did that, then he would have a better chance at appeal for sure, because yeah. there's not an attorney standing in the courtroom doing the job for him since he represents himself. I've seen defendants tried in absentia with opposing counsel present, um, either because they ran from the jurisdiction or they were so disruptive they couldn't be kept in the courtroom. Um, I've seen defendants um, uh, gagged in court, but they've had counsel to represent them for the rest of the trial. The fact that he doesn't have counsel, I think she's walking that balance of making sure he can still participate, but then preventing him from actively disrupting every single aspect of the trial. I uh -huh. think she's walking a tightrope here, but I think she's doing that part well. That's just in my opinion. I yep. don't agree with all of her rulings on objections, but that's always reviewed for an abuse of discretion, and they defer to this uh, trial court for that. Oh, yeah. Rarely ever a reason to overturn is that, unless it's the cumulative effect is that the person didn't get a fair trial. I don't think that's the case here. So, And you're, you know, you're never yeah. going to agree with the judge on all the rulings on never. objections. No way. Never. I mean, I have friends that don't agree with me on what I would think would be admissible and what's not. And then vice versa. I don't agree with them. It's like the way you interpret the rules of evidence when it comes to objections does have a, a bit of subjectiveness or subjectivity yep. built into it. Yeah. So absolutely. I, yeah. I just don't see that getting overturned. But it's, this is fascinating because if anything, what it will do is he's going to harm defendants in the future because I feel like they're going to sanction a lot of um, police uh, court procedures that would allow for the defendant not to participate as much as they normally would. Oh, yeah. I, th yeah. I think that this is going to get challenged and affirmed mm -hmm. in, in appellate courts or, yeah. or maybe even the Supreme Court at some point. Yeah. And then what, what, that'll ha what happens when that happens is everyone says, OK, it worked in this opinion. We're doing it that way. And then every state adopts it. Exactly. And that's something I haven't talked about yet on my channel. But one of the reasons I'm upset with Mr. Brooks dismissing his counsel is not just because like, oh, I'm rooting for Mr. Brooks, which clearly I'm not. I want him to right. have counsel because not only does it protect him and make sure that the conviction is strong, but even if the conviction is not overturned on appellate review, affirming this, this type of behavior in court and still saying that that's okay, that's still a fair trial, can potentially be misinterpreted by other trial courts and hurt defendants in the future. Like maybe people with genuine mental health issues and stuff like that. So I feel as though this guy, you know, is just, he just disregards everything. He disregards court rules, morality, the law, you know, people's lives. Mm -hmm. Like he, if everything is in the service of his own self, you know? 
it's it's the classic bad facts make bad law. It, I mean, oh he's yes, so, he's so unlikable that a court is really really going to find a way to not overturn a, a conviction on him. Yes, exactly, exactly. And and again, I don't think that anything was really done here that even the most liberal and by liberal I mean okay, let's. Uh, the most protective of defendants' rights, put it that right, way. Right, Even right. the most protective <laughs> of defendants' rights courts, I don't think, because I think I'm pretty protective of defendants' rights. I don't think we'll overturn this case on appeal, but it's just that I am always concerned that there's like that slippery slope waiting, you know, somebody willing to in, in, interpret another case to be like Mr. Brooks when it's not. He's this such an out there. This will certainly be one of the highest profile examples of th throw the defendant in another room with Zoom stuff and he's still participating. That's right. And there could be some circumstances where for that particular defendant, that is violating that defendant's Sixth Amendment rights to participate in their trial. But for this guy, it doesn't because he's not making it possible for the process to proceed without him being removed periodically from the courtroom. And it's the fact that the judge keeps returning him to the courtroom that makes it all the more stronger when she removes him. You know, mm -hmm. he's going to fake COVID tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. You're right, though. He's going to fake COVID tomorrow. That's um, that's probably the plan. It probably is. Yeah, everything is. I don't believe anything he says. I feel so bad, but like. He could literally be like, Natalie, the sky is blue and I will not believe him because, you know, you know me when it comes to like this whole COVID thing, I take it very seriously. But mm -hmm. him being like, he don't want to take the rapid test and, oh, I have symptoms and I need a continuance. And then the test came back negative. I just don't trust anything. So now, even when he says he has a cold, I don't believe him. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, oh, that, I didn't even I anticipate that. But now you're right. That's probably coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank hey, you, Enchanted Wolf. Wolf. Nice to see you. Okay, so they they file the jury out. They they move him next door. He, they, I didn't see an option for it though. If it, any appellate court reviewing that record is saying you should have kept him in, how how do you proceed? No, you can't. I mean. The only if you kept him in, you'd have to eventually declare a mistrial because none of the witnesses can be heard, you know, and the right. judge has the discretion to conduct the courtroom so that the trial can proceed. So, I, you know, again, I just it makes me uncomfortable just because I'm afraid of, of the consequences for future defendants. But uh -huh. in this case, this is the right thing to do. And there's just no other way to look at it, in my opinion. Oh, well, well, we'll see. So the. So it's this guy. Oh, and we're doing it through an interpreter too, which just makes it all the worse. It's oh, it's everything man. that's bad. Sympathetic witness with an interpreter. Yeah. You strike him and injure him badly and his child. Yeah. Then you're gonna act like a jackass on top of it. It's it's hard. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. And juries are more savvy than a lot of people give them credit for. Mm -hmm. Right? You get those twelve people together, and they start to make their own conclusions and stuff. And I know, well, I would put good money on Thank you. He's that they think he's acting up when the witnesses yeah, are back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, what are we doing here? She's back on the record. She's going to make her record. It, she's like, whoa, what, what happened? What, happened? Uh, you're in another room, jackass, because you can't behave. You walked over there. You should know this. I can't hear. Can you? I don't. I don't know if there's anything going on yet. I wonder if Law and Crime ha only has one camera going. That's not like them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, people, get it together. I'm poaching your stream here. Come on, Law and Crime. <laughs> What type of quality is this? We're getting from your free stream. <laughs> oh, okay. She's not back yet. Okay. I would think that there'd be a split screen. But it's not like they had the infrastructure set up for this, necessarily. 
there's a there's a few channels that are covering it. Some of them, when he's been removed from the courtroom, have had split screens. I don't know, if, you know, what we're gonna see in a second when she gets back there. She's probably cooling off too, and she's probably her and her law clerk are probably doing some research, you know. Her poor law clerk. Oh, they've probably been researching so many basic ten basic tenets of criminal law. Uh huh. I, why do you call a victim to the stand? That, that's that's a bad idea unless unless you can screw up on an ID or something. But he's ID'd 56 different ways. They have the key in his pocket to the car that ran the people over. They have him on video. Everybody identifies him. So I, I don't see what good comes out of it. But he he's dumb. He's not he, he's representing himself and he's making poor decisions. He also is making the sovereign citizen claim. So he thinks asking the victims if they've made claims will allow him to win on a technicality. Ah, That's why he's calling them. I bet you almost <laughs> everyone he calls will be a victim. And that's why his 13th witness was the state of Wisconsin. All right. All right. Now, here's the thing. Th that's Reverend that's Mr. Brooks has been removed to the other courtroom. The jury is not present. And the witness that was on the stand is also not present in the courtroom. Actually, he is here. Oh, all right. Then we'll, we'll have him removed. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. That's where you're the best for this, seated, Natalie. Seated all the way back behind a couple of individuals. Um, so this morning, uh, Mr. Brooks, prior to the court removing him, uh, had interrupted the court approximately 10 times prior to 1019 a.m. Uh, then, of course, he was removed. This does not include the repeated commentary, either under his breath, but still audible for the court to hear, the jury to hear, and witnesses uh, to hear uh, related to a variety of topics, including subject matter, juris jurisdiction, misconduct by the court, disapproval uh, with the court's rulings. This very last witness was a witness called out of order at the request of Mr. Brooks. Um, as I know the attorneys are well aware, and certainly this court is well aware, under 906.11, the court shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of truth, avoid needless consumption of time, protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. That's all under sub one. Sub two, scope of cross-examination. A witness may be cross-examined on any matter relevant to any issue in the case, including credibility. In the interest of justice, the judge may limit cross-examination with respect to matters not testified to on direct examination. I frankly haven't exercised my authority under that particular subsection. I have generally relied upon sub one. In addition, sub three says the following leading questions. Leading questions should not be used on the direct examination of a witness, except as may be necessary to develop the witness's testimony. Ordinarily, leading questions should be permitted on cross-examination. And during the cross-examination of this last witness, Mr. Brooks objected almost without fail, if not without fail, to every single question asked by the state Fair. on grounds of either leading or relevance. And yep. then when the court overruled the objections, as time went on, it seemed to me that his commentary became much more audible. He was muttering under his breath and clearly showing disrespect for the court and the proceedings. Um, in my opinion, they're baseless objections. Uh, again, because this witness was brought into court on a subpoena that was from Mr. Brooks, served, of course, by the state to assist with him in that regard. 
Uh, but the state was well within its right, rights to ask leading questions. Um, it's this court's opinion that the repeated interruptions by way of baseless objections is to disrupt these proceedings, uh, disrupt the testimony of the witnesses, and in particular, Mr. Marquez. Um, this court has been abundantly patient this morning, noting the repeated interruptions by Mr. Brooks uh, starting right away at 831. There were a couple of interruptions continuing at 837. At 848, I think we had a total of five more at that point or so. Uh, at 849, and then of course at 1019, this court removed him under its authority in Illinois versus Allen. Um, I also had warned him, or at least at times I would give the jury an admonishment, not really an admonishment, but an instruction, please disregard the commentary by Mr. Brooks. That it's been very apparent that any time this jury is brought in or taken out, Mr. Brooks begins making statements that are misstatements of the law or generally his disagreement with whatever is going on at that particular time, accusing the court of either bias or misconduct, um, accusing this court of hiding information from this jury. Um, this court is not doing any such thing. Um, I will make a finding Good question. that based upon the conduct of Mr. Brooks, that he has forfeited his right to be present during the cross-examination uh, and any redirect of Mr. Marquez. Mm. Um, Mr. Brooks's conduct has been anything but respectful today. Mm -hmm. it, again, it's been disruptive. Um, as this court was stepping off the bench, he made some type of statement about contempt. Are you finding me in contempt? This court is well aware that one of the permissible ways to handle um, a defendant who shows flagrant disregard in the courtroom for elementary standards of proper conduct um, is to find uh, a defendant in contempt. However, I'm not dealing with a defendant who is out of custody. I'm dealing with a defendant who is in custody on very serious charges, including if convicted facing uh, the possibility of life sentences without the possibility of extended supervision. Oh, that's such a good point. I didn't even think about that. that finding How are you going to hold him in contempt? He's already in jail. <laughs> uh, is not really a viable alternative to this court. Frankly, it would, in my opinion, um, it would serve to. Uh, he sure did. Give the defendant. Um, let me restate that. You know, the usual. <laughs> in my opinion, if this court were to find Mr. Brooks in contempt, it would allow him to profit from his own wrongdoing because it would result in a delay of these proceedings. I would have to, of course, uh, make certain findings. One of the possibilities for contempt is to hold him in custody until such time as he's willing to abide by the rules. That is just not something this court is willing to even do because it would delay the proceedings. Um, I, I am aware that that is a option uh, identified by the Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen, but I would remind the parties once again that Illinois versus Allen was decided in 1970. Um, certainly the technology that we have available in this courtroom was not something available to the parties in Illinois versus Allen. We have a very new state-of-the-art courthouse uh, that I am operating out of. I'm in uh, courtroom uh, 13. Next door is courtroom 20. These are just the room numbers that I'm referring to. Um, as you can see, uh, we have the ability to see and hear into that courtroom, and that courtroom has the ability to see and hear into ours. I will confirm with the bailiff and the clerk that the audio is working. I'm told that it is from my clerk. If I could also get verification uh, from the bailiffs who are in that courtroom. Um, but we have the ability, I have the ability through that technology uh, for Mr. Brooks to meaningfully participate 
Uh, he does have, and it was provided with him when he was taken to that courtroom, the objection sign. I also instructed that he be given a pad of paper and a writing utensil so that he could write down his objections. Um, or if I feel it appropriate, I can uh, um, unmute and hear what his objection is. Uh, but it's my belief that the use of my ability to mute and unmute will assist the proceedings so that it's orderly, uh, that it is free from disruption as best as I can control it under my authority under 90611 and my authority given to me and expressed by the U.S. Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen. Um, although I'm making a finding that he's forfeited his right by his conduct to be present for the continued cross-examination and any redirect of Mr. Marquez, also make an alternate finding uh, that uh, the technology that I've just described uh, provides the functional equivalent of Mr. Brooks being present uh, during this case. With that, I would like to uh, to have the jurors brought in. I'll have the witness brought back to the witness stand with the assistance of the interpreter and the state can continue with its cross exam of the witness called out of order, but on behalf of Mr. Brooks. And I am getting verification from the bailiff in the other courtroom through my bailiff here that the audio and video is working as it should. Would also like to point out that there are headphones at the table in front of Mr. Brooks should he choose to wear them. He has not worn them in quite some time. Um, previously made reference to needing it when he was in the other courtroom. So they are there and available. All right, would Mr. Marquez and interpreter Ryan please take the stand and we'll have the jury brought out. Making a record that there's nothing the wrong with his hearing. Let Mr. Brooks know he can ask to come back in. Again. Yeah, I thought that was well He's done. Willing to abide by the rules of decorum and courtesy. The record should reflect the jury is being brought back in. It's good this is televised. I agree. I think all trials should be televised. It teaches us about our system. Now let's see if they have the split screen technology. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks is appearing from another courtroom. That should not affect the jury's verdict in any way. Um, the state may continue with its uh, cross-exam of this witness. The state would have nothing further. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any redirect for this witness? Mr. Brooks, do you have any further questions for Mr. Marquez? <laughs> record to reflect that Mr. Brooks is reading out of a book. He has not answered the question. I will ask one more time. Sir, do you have any further questions for Mr. Marquez? Am I unmuted? You are. You have been. Oh, he's going to pretend like he can't hear. Yeah. Do you have any redirect questions for Mr. Marquez? The bailiff can tell her. This is your opportunity to ask any follow-up questions uh, that you have for this witness. Say something. I, I'm trying to see if the headphones on. He's such a liar. Absolutely. Oh, it does affect the jury. 
It, it's bad for his case, but he brought it on. And thank you. Right, this was his choice. Nailed it. Can someone say something from the other courtroom? Any He's questions such a liar. For Mr. Marquez, at this time, it's your opportunity to ask follow up questions. The state indicated it did not have any additional questions. Nope, I don't got no follow up question. All right, thank you. Then, Mr. Marquez, you may step down. Thank you for being here today. Why would you call a victim? All right, I need to excuse the jury momentarily. Um, please rise for the jury. tomorrow morning. All rise for the jurors, please. Um, Mr. Brooks, under Illinois versus Allen, which that case clearly tells me to do that once lost, the right to be present can, of course, be reclaimed as soon as the defendant is willing to conduct himself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concept concept of courts and judicial proceedings. Uh, the court is going to continue with the uh, direct examination by the state of Detective Carpenter. Um, I would like you to come back to this courtroom. Um, are you willing to... Uh, what? Conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the I miss what he said. courts and judicial proceedings. I didn't do anything to be found held in contempt in the first place. So I'll take that as a no. To abide by the rules of decorum and civility. Um, I would direct your attention to um, SCR chapter 62, which has been provided to you previously. Um, does that say anything in there about me being held in contempt? Um, that does not, no. So why have, I, why have I been held in contempt? I didn't hold you in contempt, sir. You are simply in a different courtroom based upon your disruptive behavior. I'm Pay attention, Dami. He wants to be held in contempt. I've put my findings on the record, sir, and I the record stands in that regard. Um, I'm giving you the corrected. opportunity, um, if you can, uh, <laughs> indicate to this court that you will conduct yourself um, with courtesy and decorum Are you willing so, to do that, sir? Is, is your honor willing to tell me why I've been held in contempt? I did not hold you in contempt, sir. I've already indicated that. Removing me from the courtroom is, is like holding me in contempt. Um, I didn't hold you in contempt. You were removed pursuant to the authority given to me by the United States Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen. Um, based on your disruptive behavior my behavior wasn't disruptive your honor the record should be corrected in that and as i recall you stating before or not you stating but us having a a, a conversation about illinois versus allen for the record at one point i could i got the date in my notes that we had it where i i said on the record that there were three three uh options identified and Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to have a debate with you on what the law means and whether you good. understand it or not. I'm simply asking you whether you are willing at this time 
to abide by the standards of courtesy and decorum that are outlined in SCR Chapter 62 and that are inherent uh, in the concept of courts and judicial proceedings, including um, making proper objections based upon the rules of evidence, based upon the rules of procedure, based upon the law, that you will not interrupt when you disagree with a ruling made by the court, uh, and that you will generally conduct yourself with dignity and decorum. But is, it not my right, is it not my right to object? I think that's the plan, Alec. I'm going to ask Mr. Brooks one more time if he would like to come back to this courtroom and if Just he's willing her to conduct himself um, with dignity, respect, and decorum. But for the record, I don't consent to being called that name, and I never stated that's that I help. wanted to be removed from the courtroom. All right, I'm going to mute uh, Mr. Brooks, he is clearly not answering my question. Um, and given his recent conduct, I'll indicate he continues to forfeit his right to be present based upon the prior okay. disruptive uh, conduct. I have given him three opportunities uh, to answer the question, would you like to come back into the courtroom? And in other words, to reclaim his right to be present. Um, he has chosen not to answer that. I understand he disagrees with the characterization by this court of his conduct, but my ruling stands and my, the reasoning for my ruling stands. What I will advise uh, Mr. Brooks is um, once the jury is brought back out and once the witness is back on the stand, I will unmute him so that he can properly object. Um, and then I'll rule on, of course, any objections. Um, I'd certainly reserve my right to use the mute function of the audiovisual capabilities that I have should that right be abused. So with that, uh, why don't we have Detective Carpenter come on back to the stand. The jury is advised to come out. He'll definitely abuse that right. Oh, yeah. This is fun. This is a, just this is wacky. Wacky uh, is the best way to put it. Mr. Brooks wanted to come back into the courtroom. He could signal to a bailiff in the courtroom that he's in that he believes he can. Yes, can thank you. Him? He may absolutely signal to the bailiff and then they can get that information to me and I will promptly stop and we'll have them brought over. Thank you for that. The state also wants to that keep the record clear so that the case is not overturned on appeal. The state is excellent here. I know, I know that's probably hard for you to get behind, just just out of habit. <laughs> but I think they're doing a really nice job. They are doing a good job. Like like they're not overreaching at all. Back? All right. No, nope. um, going sticking to the facts and the law. Remain. We'll have to clear the courtroom so he can be brought back in. We'll be in recess for that. I love the state of Wisconsin. Yes, Natalie, that's what I started to say earlier. You are like literally the best person for this because. Why, thank you. You have, well, you, your criminal defense attorney really knows what's going on. And you, uh, along with me, have been laughing at sovereign citizens for a long time. So you have much more familiarity than your average criminal defense attorney. Yeah, those hours during the pandemic spent watching sovereign citizens be crazy have actually <laughs> paid off or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, no, neither of us saw this coming. I, I, I never thought I would see that sort of thing asserted in a really serious case like this. I never thought I would see a sovereign citizen murder trial. Never. You know, traffic cases, sure, you know, but a sovereign citizen murder trial, just never. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you're going to make a dumb defense, but yeah, but yeah, whatever, your license gets suspended or you have a fine, so what? Yeah, that's yeah. probably going to happen anyway because you were probably guilty of the infraction. Sure. But well, going away for life well, on with it? Most of those sovereign citizens, any defense that they really did have, a lot of times they sabotage it because they refuse to hire an attorney. But, oh, yeah. you know. And when they're successful, it's not for the reasons they think. But in a in a in a criminal case, in a murder trial, multi 
uh, victim murder trial, six time victim. It just, I, I can't, I, I cannot <laughs> fathom someone doing this, but here he is. Ah, uh, so I, I don't even get what the plan is. They're just dragging the jury back in. Yeah. And they're going to start, get started with the witnesses again. That's all she's, she's just been managing the courtroom. She, that she's done a really good job of it. All right. Well, this is Gia taunting me from Hawaii. It's the sort of thing your chat will do to you. <laughs> <laughs> Treats for pups. Oh, I hope you're having fun, Gia. I really do. I'm jealous that Gia's in Maui. I, I'm all kinds of jelly because it is cold here in Chicago. It's, it just, this was our first cold day in Maryland, you know. Yeah, I mean, it just yeah. got cold. Yeah, I felt it this morning when I went to go take the trash out. And I was like, well, there goes that unseasonably warm weather we've been having. It's over. Yep. I recently spent a day in Maryland. I didn't well, know that. What part of Maryland were you in? We'll just we'll just leave that there. I, I might I might have gone through Baltimore for a few hours. I've got nothing but good things to say about it. You know, Baltimore has a good food scene. It's not that's not the part of Maryland I'm in, but it's it's close enough. Like an hour wow. away maybe. It's and in the state. They have a very decent uh food scene in the harbor area. That's where I was, as it turns out. Yeah. There was a great uh I think I can't remember if it's Miss Sylvia's or something, a great soul food restaurant over there. So that yeah. when I go, that's what I go for is to go have have a meal and hang out at the harbor. Yeah, it, it, it's it's fun down there. Yeah. And by the, and by the way, John O'Brien, don't 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 tell us about your seventy nine in Tampa. Oh, John, don't rub it in. N Natalie and I have been on your channel. You know we love you, but don't we don't need rub to hear it this, in, John. <laughs> <laughs> and and get on here. He was the one who was hurrying me to to stream today. I'm glad he did though. Yeah. Because it just went sideways today. I wasn't expecting any of this. I mean, I usually try to pull the highlights because I'm not streaming live ever. And this is just something else. I'm, I'm glad I'm getting to catch it live for once. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they were, I mean, yeah, he's bad, but I, I thought we'd sort of settled into a rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. he just took it up too. a notch today. He took it up talking, a notch. I was talking with Artie last week, and I was like, I feel like he's turned a corner, you know, because she had said some things to him and he had cried. The judge had, you know, like, oh, you know, you're doing a good job and I'm really going to commend you. And I was like, she's not really doing that for that. She's doing it to make the record that he's competent, you know. But either right. way, I said, I think this is going to be his turning point. He's really going to behave himself now. And Artie was like, I think you're being way too generous <laughs> and <laughs> optimistic. And he was right. <laughs> Artie might have called this one. All right. What's this? Natalie, have those Moors got arrested on roadside been, been to trial yet? I, I have been seen. trying to track that case. I haven't seen any updates either. I wonder if they quietly pled guilty or if they're still awaiting their trial dates. Either way, the news has not reported any update on their case. Do you know about that case, Mike? I do. I do. And it's like you and I live similar lives in that we actually practice and we're busy. And yeah. then we do this stuff. And you'll, you'll get way into a case. And then it's like... Two months later, you've you know you've tried two of your own cases. You've you've, yeah. you've done thirty other videos, and you're like, and someone asks you, I'm like, that's a good question, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the times I get asked about Natalie. Any follow up on that case you followed? I'm like, oh, what case is that? A lot of the times, I can't even remember at this point. Well, I mean, did they just? Did, here's the thing: did they just go for lunch? It's too early is for that, that isn't what it? Happens? It might be what happened because they've been gone a little while now. Yeah, I mean this this is longer than it takes. Yeah. Well, let me plug myself while I'm on your channel, Mike, because I'm you know gonna be absolutely rude. okay. So hey, oh, oh, that's me echoing. This is me hearing myself. Record and I'm advised oh. to have the jury brought out. Oh, I was going to get a little lawyer chick. She's awesome. And I'm That's going to be streaming some highlights of this trial tonight, as well as the latest hearing in the Chad Daybell case. I am, sir, actually. Very cool. Is he back? <laughs> he's back. Especially when I bring up subject matter jurisdiction. Oh, my God, he's in court. I know, but it hasn't been proven for the record. If you disagree with my ruling, sir, you can file an appeal. 
He's so manipulative. It has to be proven on the record. It, she's yeah, always we've heard. proven on the record. I disagree, she's, sir. Good luck with that. No, Wisconsin appellate court. Is he going to get removed from the courtroom Rise again? for the jury, please. He came back. Because it was up to him. He's so adamant about his wrong understanding of the law. I am absolutely shocked that he is back in the room. That's why it took so long. She does. Wonder Woman. Did, I Thank didn't you, want everyone. to say it, please be seated. I've, I mean, I've thought nice it several times. She's a very nice and At this time, lady. the state uh, may continue with its direct examination of Detective Carpenter. And let me know if you need the audio visual right away. Um, I will. Okay. You want it? It should be coming on. Sir, um, regarding the interview, we've been playing a couple um, snippets of the interview with uh, Mr. Brooks from um, Exhibit 82 that took place on November 22nd of last year. I would now direct um, the jury's attention to one hour, four minutes, 30 seconds. Objection, I don't consent to being called their name for the record. Oh, stop and it. I ask that be played till one hour, 18 minutes, and two seconds. Go ahead. <coughs> Thank you. So, what's your buddy's name? Can we get that? Have we got to talk to him to verify you're on the up and up and she's on some BS? His name is Marcus. What's his last name? I don't know his last name or his phone number. Uh, four, six, seven. Oh, we hope if I have my freaking phone somewhere. Four, six, seven. What a liar. Uh, what a liar. Six, seven, eighty five, thirty one or thirty or something like that. One, one, four. Yes, sir. And he lives in Milwaukee? Yes, sir. And you guys came out here together? Yes. Okay, so he has well, like I said, the Stephanie was she's a she's a older mixed lady, so she's not you know, she. Who do you know in Waukesha other than her? Um, I know a guy named Terion. Um, I met Terion there. Um, I don't know where he lives now. I met. I've been knowing him for maybe five, six years. I just know he stays in Waukesha. He comes down to Milwaukee a lot, and then he comes back up here. I don't. How old is he? I'm oh, like 34, 35. 34. Yeah. Where is he? Maybe. Give me. I know. Uh, I know a lot of. I know a lot of females. Well, how many times have you been to Terry's house? Um, once in like 2018. Do you remember? It was like a, it was like an apartment. It wasn't a house though. Apartment? Yeah. Do you remember what was near it? Um, I think it was like right on the main street. What's the main street? There's a lot of like, streets. Like is whatever, it, is whatever it street downtown. What, what would be considered downtown? Where all the bars and restaurants yeah. and it, it, shops are. District. Is Stephanie I'll, always near downtown? Uh, a bunch of bars and a business district right near there? The only thing I can remember is a gas station, like a titty quarter gas station. I think this street is like a one-way. Whatever street is right here is like a one-way. And it's a gas station like right here. Remember what kind of gas station? The Columbia Speedway quick trip hometown. Not, not a quick trip. Not a speed wedding, like a the blue and white one. Blue and white. Any schools or parks nearby our house? Something like that. Anything you remember like that? Trails. I know the. I know that park. I know that park. Is is by the uh, old girl's house. By whose house? Stephanie's? Yeah. Park. What? Trail I don't. Park. I don't know the name of the park, but it has like a little. Creeker. Some it was something going on out there yesterday to where a lot of shit was blocked off. Okay. I don't I don't like I said I don't know about Walkershaw, I don't know, but 
It seemed like everybody was at that park kind of walking around that creek. Like a uh, playground type park or like a... Like a, uh, like a park. It's, it seemed like a little creek or something. Well, I don't know if you, you would say a creek. What would that be? But a river? Would that be a river? <laughs> just walk so have a river? <sighs> well, I know it's just a small, it's a small body of water. It's like, how would I describe it? But there were barricades blocking up some shit off here then? No, it looked like in that area. In that area? In that area, it looked like a bunch of shit was, like, blocked. You okay. couldn't go down certain streets or some shit. I, I don't know, but that park is close to the old girl's house where that's why I said, look, when our friend was like, you know, your baby mama trying to get in touch with you. And I'm like, was she, tall, like, yeah, what's up? What's she telling you? What's what's going on? And she was just like, well, she said she got some money for you. And I was like, why would she tell somebody else? That's what I started thinking at first. Like, that's, like why is you think? Because she, she'll tell me the same thing. Don't Natalie Lawyer check. So then when she put uh -huh. this in, when she merged this in, you out here, you out here, you out here. I'm like, man, yeah, but I'm like, what's up? Like, you yeah, yeah I'm, okay cool you going you going to no not staying out here like that i'm watching the game and i'm gone so she tell you where to meet or you tell her where she to told meet? me where to meet i told her, i said it's a gas station right here and she was like is it a park right there i'm like i don't know is it a park right here they like yeah there's a park right down here blah 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 i'm like well just meet me over there i'll get the money from you give you a hug give you a kiss and you know i'll call you later or whatever it wasn't supposed to be us hanging out, spending time together. It wasn't that. It wasn't supposed to be that. She got mad because I didn't want to do that. That's why I kind of figured, but like I said, I didn't see her drink. I'm not going to sit here and say, I saw her drink. I'm not going to lie on her. I didn't. But when she started acting like, yeah, you finna, that's when I kind of was like, she probably been drinking. She probably having chest just stop drinking but you was drinking sometime today i know you was drinking sometime today i didn't tell her that i say yeah because she's acting too you know what i mean are oh, you just finna you just finna get oh you just think you finna get the money and leave and you just you must you must got some bitch right on you and blah 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 blind i'm like see this is why this is why i just should have just Watch the game and laugh, dude. Like, all right. So the fuck, man. So you came out. How did you get out here again? My friend. What type of car did you drive? Oh man, it's like a Kia type of car. I don't know if it's a Kia, but it's a small four door car like that in that type of model. What color is it? Like tan. And was it just the two of you that rolled out together? Did anyone roll out from Milwaukee? With no, it was just us two. Two of us. He, said, and he, he said this probably was going to be some chicks over here. You know, like I said, the Stephanie girl is an older, an older woman. She, you know, likes to party, drink, you know, watch the game. She cooks. Sure. Cool. Fuck it. Let's watch the game. Shit. I, I was only going to probably go to my mom's house and watch the game there and my mom has to go to work so uh, i was just gonna be sitting here like this fuck it might as well go you know what i'm saying did he offer and, and at the same time sorry. cool i can get the money but you know that she's been holding for me yeah did he offer to drive what i mean do you have your own car did he offer to no drive? I, I don't how did you guys come i don't own a vehicle don't own so, a vehicle. Nope. do you have any car you can drive at all no i have license so you have a I do have license, license, but no, no vehicle. Don't ever use your niece's nephew's mom's car or anything like uh, that. My nephew doesn't have a vehicle. My niece is 14. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your mom? No, my mom doesn't even know how to drive. She doesn't have a car, doesn't know how to drive? She doesn't know how to drive. So she she never car? learned. Okay. Does she have a car that she lets you use at all? No. Does she have a car at all? Maybe that not that she lets you use. Does no. she have a car in her name at all? I think she did at one point. Does she right now? Not that I know of. Okay. I'm not I'm not gonna say no because I don't know. 
I honestly don't know. Me and my mom just, we was kind of having family issues for a while, so we didn't talk for a while. The issues that didn't have nothing to do with, with this, it was between me and her. So um, we started back talking when I was in Georgia. So whatever she, whatever she had going on when I was on the West Coast, coming back to Milwaukee, I don't know. But I can tell you this. My mom is 60-some years old. She's never drove. She doesn't know how to drive. She doesn't even have a license. She catches the bus to work, which I don't like her doing because Milwaukee. Sure. She has to go. She works at Freighter, so she has to go. The way her bus route goes, she has to go way up to like 92nd. Some, some, she doesn't they don't even have understand how much of the timeline he's establishing for the police. A lot of what he's saying is establishing him being in certain locations that corroborate that he's the driver of the vehicle. I'm like, you probably going to have to change your route to catch the bus from downtown Milwaukee on Wisconsin Street, downtown Milwaukee, and then go up because I don't like her. Sure. Yeah, I don't like her. She just argued a little bit, and then you you're saying you walked away yesterday. Yeah, I just told her. I told her I'm like I'm not finna I'm not finna freaking. Be. It was yeah. people out there. They they would they would tell you I did not put my hands on this woman. I did not push this woman. I did not choke this woman. People I did not like, kick this woman. I did not grab this woman. I did not do anything to this woman. People out there, as in like just regular old civilians. Just regular like, civilians. Just people regular know you. Regular civilians. Did you meet her by yourself? I met her by myself. No one from the house went with No one. And there was people walking up and down the street. Like I said, it was people out because it was daytime. So it wasn't like we was just yeah. in some secluded area where it was just me and her. Mm -hmm. you, it was it was people out there. And they, but is anybody I, that knows you or knows Nobody you? that knows me. Mm -hmm. Nobody that knows me. I don't know if it was anybody around that knows her, but I know people were walking up and down the street people were walking around that park sure it was like basically we were out in public like if we was out in public if something would have happened people would yo with the hit like it, where was we gonna go to not be seen all right so i might have missed this you, you touched on it. you were at the gas station or the park i know the park's nearby you met her at the gas, gas station no, yep, they misdirected the him the gas station was by and he fell for it hook line and sinker yeah. We were in. The gas station is by that park. Yeah, I'm just clarifying. Yeah. Okay. Um, Which car were you in when you met her at the... I didn't park? meet her in the car. I just oh. I walked right over there. You walked. I walked right over there to the park, and she was standing, like, right wherever this entrance to this park is. Like I said, it was people everywhere. So yeah. Anybody would see us standing out there. She was standing right there waiting for me. I walked up, gave her a hug, and she, I was like, and she was just like, well, my friend has my purse, so I don't have the money and all this. I'm like, so you had me come way out here? You know, like a power player or something? That, that basically was like, yeah, nah, I, yeah. Okay. You know, you, you basically, you see how fast you caught on to that? And I was just like, you had me come way out here. You know, I ain't even supposed to be around you like that. You had me come way out here to meet you. For you to try to play and shit like this, I said, "No, nah, man, I'm fin I'm gone. Yeah, so I'm out." Was, it was daylight when you met up with her. Was it still daylight, pretty much, when you walked away from her? Yeah, it was daylight the whole. Time. This was broad daylight. That's what I'm saying. Like people outside, everything going on, people walking around the park. I'm like, anybody could have saw. Anybody would have saw us talking. Anybody would have saw if anything happened. Anybody would have saw if. I did something to her, she did something to me, if I ran from the scene, if I did this, anybody would have seen it. Do you know how she got out here to meet you out here? Did she, she didn't say? She's apparently been staying out here. Okay. So we, This is what she told our mutual friend. I don't know if that's true. All right. I haven't talked to her and haven't seen her in like yeah. almost a month. That's fine. So I don't I don't know. You said you said you you don't know where your phone is. Um we're talking your cell phone, right? Yeah. You're not sure did you leave it do you do you keep that with you is that your phone that you have with you all the time because you seem i don't know where it is i don't have it you seem confused it's missing is that something yeah that well you? yeah like if you go somewhere do you take your phone absolutely 
My mom just got me that phone. It's my first ever iPhone. Okay. I don't know if she was using it first kind of thing, but she was just like, I got a surprise. For you. Oh, I good Lord. And his it. mommy got it. Hopefully we'll find it for you. And that's the number with the 610, if I had to call you after yeah. today, the 610. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That's why I was asking him. I said, man, they find, when I told them, I said, look, y'all reaching for my ID. That's why I said, how can y'all not find my flip flops or my phone? I had on some Green Bay Packer flip flops because it was game day. And we did stop at one hour, 18 minutes and two seconds. Sir, with regard to this clip, you, you asked the defendant about his, his phone, correct? Yes, I did. Did you know where his phone was when you asked him if he lost it? He's in his early forties. Overrule the witness may answer. The phone was found inside the vehicle, so I, he didn't he didn't have it with him when he was what taken into custody. The red Ford Escape. Um, overruled the witness may answer. I'm sorry. The red Ford Escape. And in whose name was that car registered? Don Woods. And what relationship is Don Woods to the defendant? Objection, Lee. Overruled. She is his mother. Did you question your question about the phones? What significance, if any, did that have to you? Or why did you ask him about the phone? Strike strike the initial question. Why did you ask Mr. Brooks about the phone? Objection. I don't think sent to be in court that night. The objection's over. Go ahead, you may answer. One, you know, um, to verify his contact information, but two, um, one, if we were to find the phone, it would help us know whether it is his. Um, and if we were able to find a phone and we know it's his, um, knowing the phone number, including make and things of that nature can help, um, be used in location services at a later time to further verify that the suspect was Mr. Brooks, excuse me, was in Waukesha at the time when these incidents occurred. And again, at the time that you asked these questions, did you know that the phone had been located in the car or you did not have that information at this time? Um, sustain us to the form of the question. What information at the time that you asked Mr. Brooks about the phone, did you have about it? Objection. <clears throat> um, overruled. You may answer, sir. Uh, very little. At that point, I don't recall if I knew that the vehicle, that the phone was inside of his mother's vehicle. Okay. Thank you. Now directing you to um, the mark of one hour, 19 minutes and 20 seconds to one hour, 38 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, let's play that portion of the interview. Fish, she drinks. So after you talk to her, Darrell, um, where did you go? Do you have a, they found you, it was cold yesterday. You didn't have a jacket, did you have a jacket with you? I did, you I did there? initially have a jacket because like I said, I was, I was riding with somebody else. So I figured. So you didn't I, bring one in anticipation of a I, I didn't because I figured I'm going from the house right to wherever we're going so i didn't it wasn't to me it wasn't like i'm gonna hang out with, with y'all all night type of type of deal we was just supposed to be watching the game having a few cold ones and then i was getting dropped back off home 
So what happened, Darrell, where you ended up? So I know you say you're not familiar with the area. So At I'll, all. I'll lay this out for you. At so all. follow me for a minute. Um, you say you're kind of near this park. I got an idea in my head of where you're talking, based on my knowledge of the city. Um, it's right near Stephanie's where you're hanging around watching the game and Marcus is there. Um, you came out here with your phone because you take it with you. How did you end up at this guy's house? Now, you said when you you walked away from Erica, did she go the other way? I don't. You walked away. From what I remember, she just stood there. Okay, she, so you, she was just standing there like. Right. Well, so whatever. you walked away and it was over. It, it was, was over. It was over. How did you end up at a guy's house asking to use his phone, which is blocks away from Stephanie's? Okay. I can tell you that based on my knowledge of the city, based on approximately where you're telling me it is without your phone and your shoes. Do you understand where that's kind of weird? How did you get to be over there? What happened? It's clear he became a sovereign citizen in the jail because he's not denying his name or anything here. Yeah, that was one of my questions. Friend or partner or whatever, whatever the case may be. They was getting into it about pretty much the same thing that I was getting into it with Erica about. I was just like him, him, who's him, Marcus, him, her, and whoever else. Stephanie. Was there anyone else there other? Than yeah, at her house. Yeah, okay. the few girls that I didn't know, but they had already said it was gonna be people over here. Okay. So, All right. So I was pissed because I I feel like I just met up with her, with my baby's mom. I just met up with her. For absolutely nothing. You so you you tell me, okay, you out here in Waukesha, I'm out here, let's meet up, I got your money, and then I walk over there and you don't have the money. Or you do or you don't, you just ain't gonna give it to me. But however the case may be, so I'm just like, okay, whatever. Well, hold on. So I, when I, I get back your piss, but when I get back over there, I'm pissed. Okay. They was getting into it and he like, Man, come on, bro, we just finna go, we just finna go. And I'm like, what the fuck going on? Like, I just got into it with it. Now y'all into it. Like, man, this bitch tripping. Whatever, let's go. I'm like, nah, nah. I, I uh, no. Nah. I'm like, I'm out, dog. And I just started. Marcus walking. wanted to leave. He wanted to leave, but I ain't. I don't know what the fuck he was on. Doobie, doobie. He probably didn't even get into it with old girl, but he out there like, man, let's just go, bro. Let's just go, bro. How long have you known Marcus? I know Marcus for years. Years. Okay. I'm going to be straight with you because you've been asking me for that all along. That doesn't make sense. Listen to me, okay? Just listen to me. You go to this house. You leave. It was... That wind was cold as hell. Not at first. Well, by the, by the time it was getting later in the day, I mean, after the Packer game, you're talking 3, 30, 4 o'clock, it, it was getting cold. I was outside for a while. Yeah, it was about like So there, yeah. by the time you're talking, it was getting cold. All right. Marcus is ready to leave because this bitch is being crazy. He's like, I'm out. You just went through the same experience from what you're telling us. You live in Milwaukee. I don't know what on, exactly on, happened with him, though. I mean, I told you love me. Wait out. I know you don't know exactly what happened. But who are you going to trust more? Marcus, who you've known for years, or Stephanie? Why would you walk away, walk all the way down to where you did, leave your phone in the apartment, apparently? No, I didn't. I didn't with your sandals, I didn't leave. I didn't and leave. go down to where you were and not take the ride back to Milwaukee. You follow what I'm saying? Right. Can you understand I don't, know if, to, I don't know if he left and went back to Milwaukee, though. I don't know if he did that. But well, how are you going to get back if you don't get in the car? I called an Uber. That's what I did. So what happened? How did you get all the way to where you went? Because there's all these businesses in between where you were and where you got to. How did you end up at a random house without your shoes and your phone, girl? This is what I'm saying. I had my flip-flops on. I had them. <laughs> I just said that. Where did they go? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if when they slammed me down, they just never, I don't know. 
I knocked on two doors, not not just the one. So you had your flip flops. I had my Green Bay Packer flip flops on. Yes. Green Bay Packer. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I did. I wasn't just walking around with no shoes. That didn't happen until after the fact. That's what I'm trying to say. Like. So I guess another question I would have for you is if you had your phone too, correct? Yeah. Okay, you didn't leave it at the phone. No. That's why I was telling you it should have been on the grass. Remember, right. I, I described the phone to you. I said it's black. It has a crack screen. Yep. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Why are you asking other people to use their phones? Why is that guy like My you? phone was dead. Okay. When did it die? I have no idea. Okay. And I didn't have a charger. But you used it for the three-way call. And I used his phone for the three-way call. Okay. Like I said, we got a mutual friend named Michelle. Me, me and Erica do. I've known Michelle just as long as I've known Erica. She was the one that was telling me what's going on with you and your baby mama. Y'all not talking because she's trying to get in touch with you. I said, yeah, I know. I know she probably trying to get in touch with me. Well, I'm going to merge y'all. That's how I end up talking to her and telling her I'll, I'll you know, I'll walk over and meet you to get the money or whatever. You mm-hmm. just hug you, just whatever. I had my flip flops on then. I wasn't like I said. I wasn't just because the the way is he was making it seem like I was just running around with no shoes to begin with. Right. It was like no. I mean, it was pretty cold. You didn't have a jacket or sweat. Well, I didn't have a jacket to begin with. Okay. I didn't have a jacket to begin with, but I'm saying my shoes. I I had flip flops. So you had a jacket before. Or I now? never had a jacket. Okay. I had flip flops. Green Bay Packer flip flops. Flip flops. Jacket. Right, because I didn't feel like I was going to be like, where I'm not going to be outside. Well, mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm not going to be outside. If I'm just going from a car to a house, it's no reason for me to have a coat on, or at least that's how I'm thinking. I always do that. That's just like if I had a car and I know I'm going to go somewhere, and I'm like, I'm just going from here to here. Well, it's no reason for me to just get all bundled up and do all this and that. It's no you, reason for there me. still a bunch of people out when you left when you left her house. It was, it was still it was still it was daytime. Still, okay, it was still there were a bunch of people when you were talking to Erica. There was still a bunch of people when you left Stephanie. When I was no 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 I wasn't talking. When you left Stephanie's, it was still daytime. It was still daytime. Yes. Okay. Were well, there still a lot of people out? It was still like it was still people out. Okay. It was still people out. Um, not a lot in that area. By the park, it was a lot of people out. Okay. Like I said, it looked like something was, I don't know what the hell. <laughs> but it was a lot of people out. And it was, like I said, it was people, it was older couples walking down the street. It was younger people walking down the street. People were like an event or something was going on? I, I don't know, but it kind of seemed like it was a lot, like it was something going on to where it was vibrant. Because it was a lot of people everywhere. Walking everywhere. up and down the street. Everywhere. It's people, 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 people. That's what I'm saying. Like, if I got into a fight with her right there, it would be so impossible for somebody to not be like, hey, this guy's fighting this chick or whatever the case may be. Like, it, how could somebody not see something? How long was it be- between leaving Stephanie's and those cops yelling at you at the door of that guy's house? Was it dark when they yelled at you? Yeah, by the time they came, it was dark. Okay. But we had been sitting out there. We had been sitting out there for a minute, me, me and the guy. We were sitting right there on the porch. We were just sitting there. To find how long? Uh, estimate. Maybe all, maybe 20, 30 minutes, maybe. It wasn't long, long, but it was, it was, Long enough for, like, cause like I said, he let me use his phone. We sat on the porch. We were sitting right there, just like this, just sitting on the porch. While I called, called me an Uber. I called the Uber. I said, look, man, I, I let him know. I said, look, I ain't trying to rob you or nothing like that. Because when I knocked on the door, he kind of was like, whoa. I'm like, look, I don't got no weapons. I'm not trying to break in your house. I'm not trying to rob you. Nothing like that, dog. I just need to call an Uber. That's it. You, I'm not... You know, he was just like, okay, I come out, boom, I, yo, I need an Uber to, yo, what's your address? He told me the address. 
and we was just sitting there waiting. That's how I was going to get back home. I told him, I said, I got, I got the money on my car. I'm not asking you for no money. I just need to use your phone. That's it. That was it. That was all. And then from there, we sat on the porch and just shot the shit out of him. I'm saying you told me last night he was cool with that. Like, he wasn't, yeah, he it wasn't being weird. He wasn't. He was just like, oh, yeah, I'll help you out. Yeah, we just sat there on the porch. He asked me, he did ask me, he said, do you need a jacket? I said, no, I'm straight. Like, I, I'll be home as soon as the Uber come. I know it's probably going to cost me <laughs> probably like $40 to get from me. I'm guessing. I don't I don't know. But mm-hmm. probably. But I had enough on my car to where I knew I can get home. And that's that was the main thing. I'm like, I'm just going home. She can keep the money or whatever. I didn't even try to contact her further. I just was like, I'm, I'm gone. I'm calling yeah. Uber and I'm going home. That's it. Let me ask you this, Darrell. So you weren't out. You weren't out in Waukesha Saturday, just Sunday. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Nothing physical yesterday. Um, like I told you, you're a part in the investigation. There's a lot of parts, right? In the investigation, there's investigation. We talk, well, this domestic abuse thing I'm telling you about, right? Okay. okay. So wait. Hold on. Let me. Oh, okay. let me go. I'm sorry. I you just had a about, question, but you talked about being a you know a religious man, right? I can do better. I can definitely do better. We all could. I'm not. We all could. That's that's why. That's why. Yesterday was a mistake. I should have just freaking watched the game and just fucking went home. Right. Because uh, that's the thing. What is? What do they teach us in Christianity? Throughout that, they teach us that we're broken. Right. Mm -hmm. We're sinners. Even when we're born, we're born sinners. We're broken. That's why Psalm 51, 17. Thankful for God's grace and forgiveness, right? When we ask for it, um, even though we don't deserve it. But when we ask for it, he gives it. All right? You're a father. You got three children, 18, is it 18, 14, and 7? Yes, sir. All right? You got a mama that raised you well. And a God you, you believe in. Absolutely. All right? And all of them are, here's the thing they'll all want, is to tell that you're telling the absolute full truth and nothing but the truth, right? Absolutely. So I hope you got it, right? Absolutely. I'm familiar. We've all heard that, right? Um, and I just have concerns if I fact check that Darrell's not telling me the truth. You don't have a car, so Marcus had to bring you out. You don't own a car. Your mom doesn't own a car, right? So Marcus had to bring you out. So why did we find you with a car key in your pocket? It wasn't in my pocket. I don't even know where they said that was laying on the ground. That's yours. Yeah. It's it's yours. It should have been by my ID. Yeah. It's yours. It's your car key. Okay. Because it goes to a court escape in your mom's name covered in Wonka Show. Okay. Listen, Darrell. I'm trying to be as open and honest with you as I can be. You know, I'm Christian too. And believe me, I'm not perfect. Neither are you. And I'm not calling you a terrible man. I'm not saying you were out yesterday hunting and just let me finish. But you did not walk to that house. You did not walk to that house. You did not come here in a tan Kia. You didn't. Tan who? You did not come out here in a tan Kia. Okay. You've got a key in your pocket. You have a car, your mom's name. Okay. And that key works for that car. For the love of God, Marcus. Hello, hello, hello. For yourself, hello. for your family. You know what happens hey, hey. for the people. I am a happens. huge fan of Spectrum, as with everyone could probably imagine. With a car. With a mom being with your mom's car. car. You're driving. All right, guys, I'm going to sign in. You drove out of there in your I'll see you all later. Car. I'll post the link when I'm going to do my stream tonight. Thank you so much for coming by, Natalie. See you later. Thank you for having me. Oh, initially, I yeah, you like, see you, John. Do I have that right? And then you changed it to the park. So that's an injustice. No, no, I see it. Everybody go there. subscribe at Natalie, Natalie Lawyer Chick. You Good stuff. It. Absolutely. It by, you said you went. Oh, and it was by a gas station. That's where you met her. No, 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 no. I said I met her at the park. Okay. At well, Creek. Met her, you say you it. met her at the park in your mom's car. I missed all the fun. Red Ford Escape. Got in, you talk, 
and what you're telling me seems pretty consistent that there was nothing physical between the two. No, I didn't. No. But you met her in the car. I didn't put my hands on her. Nothing like but you that. met her in the car. Tim, what's going on, man? Asking you a question. Just, uh, you out there just driving kept me kind of crazy. On, Some man. people said you were driving Dealing with a cable worker. You so. got the force of it. Been better. You got the key. You got the car. Did you take the car or did your mom give you the car? I know you know what car. I, I sent him a link. I just want to know. <laughs> so. So people, Not more than you, all those okay, people no, 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 reported that no. car driving a bit erratic. I, I know what you're saying. All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. We all been straight up with each other. You knew it was more to what you was asking me yesterday. Didn't know that would sure. explain that would explain the FBI. God damn it, man! You're chat and all that, right? They're not here today. So if it's that big a deal, you don't see them here today. Come on, Kurt. Hey, we been, we been. You guys met in the car. We've been cool, yeah, man, awesome. the whole time. If I did something, yeah. if I did something yeah, wrong, that's why they were here. But do you see them here today? They're not here today. Yeah, but but y'all lied to me, man. You made it seem like they just come for no reason. Well, here's the thing, Darrell. And I'm like, what hey, if I if it's listen today to for a minute? I can, I, apologize. You, I can give I, you a clean slate I, here. I, I apologize. Because you have lied to us as well. Because you came out here in the Red Ford Escape. Okay, that is what you came out here in. You had the key. All right? So what I want to do is try to give us all a chance to reset. You understand what I'm saying? Start over. Because you're not giving us an accurate story. You didn't ride out with Marcus in a tan car. You said your mom doesn't have a car. I've just told you we've disproven that. All right? I don't know what kind of woman she is. I don't know what you all been through. But you were seen in the car driving kind of, driving kind of acting a fool. Okay? In basically the same area that you've already been able to describe to me. I'm just trying to figure out how and why it happened. What made you tear out of there? What made you so mad where you're like, fuck it, and you raced on out of there? And then people call, man, this guy, is, he's driving around here kind of fast. All I want to know, like I said, y'all been cool with me. Am I charged with anything? Thank you, buddy. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Right now, I, I'm missing. I will tell you anything I'm you want to know. Is the you worst. Were driving a bit oh, this might be an so be no, Listen, listen. No, I don't drink. That, 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 you that still had a couple cold ones during the game. No, nah, yeah, I, yeah. But I'm saying the hard alcohol is not my thing. I was not drunk when you get the book. And the video stopped at 1 hour, 38 minutes, 30 seconds. <coughs> Tata, can you explain what was occurring That's here trick. during this clip? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the objection is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead. You may answer. Um, <clears throat> so in this clip here, um, my goal and intentions were with Mr. Brooks to start um, getting into the details um, of him driving the Red Ford Escape through the parade route um, and to begin confronting him <laughs> with information. I'm 30. Um, about the Ford Escape key that had uh, been found in his pocket. Obviously, to this point, um, Mr. Brooks had told us. Hello, hello, that hello. Hey, Rob. He didn't have a vehicle that she let him use. He didn't know if she had one at all. Um, the vehicle was in his name. Um, is it his name? I'm sorry, in his mother's name, Mrs. Mrs. Woods, Don Woods. Um, it stated he didn't have a vehicle at all. Objection leading. Um, the previous objection, it's noted, um, <coughs> it's overruled. The witness may continue. Um, he had made statements earlier in the interview he didn't have a vehicle at all that he had written out um, in the Kia, which is not true. 
Um, the investigation showed Mr. Brooks came out here in the red Ford Escape by himself. So he was, in fact, in possession of a vehicle. He was, in fact, um, driving a vehicle. Um, in regards to the area, you know, it should be known that Mr. Brooks's description of the park, Frame Park is the park where parade attend, or I sorry, I should say people in the parade, wherever they might have been, lined up. Um, they were lining up at Frame Park. Frame Park is a park we'll take that it. has a body of water, as Mr. Brooks described. Uh, Thank you. Specifically, the Fox River running through it. So he was able to describe that park. Um, there were people everywhere walking up and down the street, just as he said. Uh, streets were closed off via barricades, via, uh, via marked squad cars, uh, via police tape. Uh, so he was able to describe that. And the way he described the area was exactly almost how the area looked um, with the parade. It was extremely crowded um, due to the people marching in the parade. Um, it was, in fact, shown to be daylight I think you just lost when it. Mr. Brooks met with Ms. Patterson and then departed from Ms. Patterson. It is something we learned, and I was able to confirm that based on how he described it. Um, and... You know, furthermore, you know, he describes and he, he he gives the impression, Mr. Brooks does that, well, if I was in a domestic, someone would have seen it. Someone would have seen it because there were all the people are there and there were, but it's not necessarily going to be seen as easily as Mr. Brooks was trying to lead me to believe because it took place inside of the vehicle. Uh, Mr. Brooks did not walk to the park to meet Ms. Patterson. That was proven a, as evidence in this investigation. He drove there and met up with her in Dawnwood's Red Ford Escape, which is the same vehicle after departing the park, drove along Main Street in Waukesha through the parade route. The key found in the defendant's pocket. Did that operate the Red Ford Escape that was eventually located that was registered to Dawnwood? Objection. That's been answered numerous times. Um, what well, role the witness I, may answer? There's never any depiction of a key being found <laughs> in the defendant's pocket. Oh, he's going to go down a rabbit hole again. The objection is noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. Um, yes, it did. And uh, um, well, you know, as we discussed the key more, you can even hear in there that Mr. Brooks acknowledges it should have been near his ID. <laughs> And was his ID also found in his pocket? Do you know? Objection. Yes, it was. Um, please wait till I rule on the objection. Sustain this to the form of the question. I'll strike the last yeah, answer. Please form. rephrase. Where was that his ID found? <laughs> in his pocket. And the information you had, where was the key found? Objection leading. <clears throat> Overruled. Objections. Asked and answered. Um, Overruled. What was the answer? The key was found in his pocket. Yeah, I think you know that. Now, you also mm -hmm. talked to I'll Mr. Keep doing the about his comments. phone. See, I like Where did he say his phone was? According to Mr. Brooks, at this point, the phone should have been near him, I believe he said, in the grass. And what did you take that to mean? It should have been near him in the grass. Objection. That was never stated. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. I would interpret it as right next to him where he was arrested. Okay, that's where it's just where he was arrested. Objection yes. leading. Um, overruled, the answer may be given. <laughs> yes. After the defendant met with Erica Patterson, what did he describe his emotion as being? Angry, frustrated over the fact that Ms. Patterson brought him to the park and did not have the money to provide him that she indicated him to him prior to that she would have. Where did he say his flip-flops were? Objection. Answer. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Well, when he indicated that he departed um, Stephanie's house, the they were on his feet. However... 
during the course of his arrest, um, he indicates he doesn't know where they went. So somehow, apparently, they, I, I guess, according to Mr. Brooks, disappeared. Now, the clothes that the defendant's wearing in this video, the specifically the red shirt, was that a shirt that was provided to him um, by law enforcement? Objection, you're saying. Overrule, the witness may answer. Uh, no, ma'am, that's the same shirt he was wearing at the time of his arrest. Glad someone's keeping it count. Did he indicate to you during this interview whether or not he had a coat? Objection. So on the video. Um, overall, the witness may answer. Uh, Mr. Brooks indicated that he did not. And how long did he say he was on the porch with the homeowner whose house he was arrested at? Objection. Brother Hissy. Overruled, the witness may answer. I believe it was like 20 to 30 minutes. The weather that evening, um, was that an appropriate shirt to be wearing for 20 to 30 minutes outside? Objection. Objection. That's 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 a proper objection. Overruled, the Just witness may answer. Make the right objection. No, it was not. That actually was a reasonable objection if you could just, just not relevance. <laughs> yeah. That actually is a relevant video. Scene objection. Like play one hour forty minutes, zero seconds, <coughs> to one hour forty one minutes and thirty seconds. If we may play that now. Go ahead. Prosecutor has a cold. Sounds not like Petra. Right. So what had you so mad? Because you had your mom's car. I don't know if you use it. Who uses it? You got the key in the car. Is it hers? Is it yours? Does she let you use? Let's clean that part up. Whose car is it? It's my mom's car. Okay. How often do you drive it? Uh, not very much. It's the Red Ford Escape. That's all I want to know. Please. At least today. So Just Please, whenever you can't tell me, I understand. I understand. All I want to know, just, just so I can have a peace of mind, just for, just for my girls, man. What am I looking at? Well, the fact you're kind of racing. It can't happen. That's the first part, right? So we're not quite there yet. I'm trying to figure out if I've got all my facts right first. So this wasn't a three-way call. Let's back up to there for a second. How did you come to I'm me? Here, in the trial. This is a fantastic to way to park? see how interrogation operates. Yeah, this this is a good one. This interrogator is so not incredible. Okay, it's by the book. Empty? Well, you were driving. You, you, and the video stopped at one hour, 41 minutes and 30 seconds. Sir, is this the first time in this interview that Mr. Brooks acknowledged knowing about the Ford Red Ford Escape? Objection leading, and that was not stated. Um, the objections noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. No, no consent to being called that name. Overruled. Yes, that is the first time. No. Again, Mr. Brooks is asking about the charges. Did you recall seeing that on this clip as well as the clip contained within one hour, 19 minutes and 20 seconds and one hour, 38 minutes and 30 seconds? Objection, leading and compound questions. Um, overall, the witness may answer. <laughs> yes, I recall. Wow. That's his and first again, compound, yes, and I think he was right. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a good objection, but I'm surprised he knew the words. The that was actually a decent objection. Yeah. Well, you know, to that point, I've been talking about the domestic abuse incident with Mr. Not Bruce, every end and, makes the um, comments, but so. I started talking to him about driving and just driving kind of fast. Um, I had mm. not noted to Mr. So does vodka. at that point that he had struck with struck anybody. Um, it seemed to me, based on Mr. Brooks's behavior. Reasonable to believe like that it's not even Mr. New Brooks, York, it was clear to me doing? he could remember something else happening. 
And I could sense what Mr. Brooks was attempting to do at that point was draw out of me more information. And again, as I stated in my earlier testimony, to gauge his truthfulness, I wanted to hear what he had to tell me about the incident before giving him too much specific detail. Uh, at this point, Mr. Brooks, for example, Ms. Woods' vehicle, he indicated she did not own one. He had lied to me. Um, there is the risk if I start giving him too much specific information, he's going to create a lie about what I gave him and, and so Objection, on. So not responsive and speculative. Kept, Mr. Brooks kept Cut insisting off. to know the charges before a, a decent defense attorney talking to me, that. but for the integrity of the investigation, that was something I couldn't, I couldn't and wouldn't provide him. Direct your attention to one hour, 44 minutes, 30 seconds and playing until one hour, 45 minutes and 35 seconds. Objection, speculation on the chat. One hour, 44 minutes, 30 seconds now. I'd ask that it be played. Go ahead. I want to tell you that, you know, you're working with XYZ. If you didn't do XYZ, we got to correct it. We got to correct it. It's all fact gathered. I just feel like there are no more than what y'all say, though. And that's what has me like. Like, why should I cooperate when there's no cooperation with me? Nothing nothing I'm saying is going to help me. I mean, like, it doesn't make sense to the, we're trying to. You're just figuring this out. Yeah, me, yeah. Did, Absolutely. Right? I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. Yeah, you this know, metal is what you guys are doing. I'm just saying, I don't want to get railroaded by people not being honest. That's all I'm saying. If, if I don't know what I'm looking at, <laughs> It's like, what the hell? Like, why should why should I just sit here and be like, oh, this is everything and blah 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 blah, and then and then people come back and be like, okay, well, okay, now we, yeah, so now we're gonna charge you with this and this and this and this. All right, and this I need to get back. I'll be right back. The door. Oh, we don't know that we're gonna charge you. We're we're that's again the fact that yeah, like, we're ooh. asking the questions about. You know what I mean? That's why we're. What's going on here, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. For the record, it stopped at one hour, 45 minutes and 36 seconds. Thank you. So at this point, um, Mr. Brooks is still continuing to try to determine what exactly, you know, he's being charged with. And, you know, another part of this investigation is it, it was so broad. I didn't know exactly what some of those charges even were going to be. I, I had an idea, but I didn't know exactly. Um, and in reality, what we wanted to know at that point is where he drove, have him tell us where he drove and why he did it. Um, but Mr. Brooks just was not willing to indicate that to us and explain that to us without us telling him what specific charges he was looking at. And this is a theme that continued over the next several hours. Direct your attention to one hour, 49 minutes and 36 seconds playing until one hour, 54 minutes and 30 seconds. And it is starting at one hour, 49 minutes and 36 seconds. Go ahead. So your issue right now with us is you feel like you're, we're not sure. I'm getting railroaded. Okay. I know I am. No, y'all not telling me what's really going on, but we're not, we're not getting the full truth either. I know, but no, I, and what I was saying was, I, an so when you left, I know I just lied to you. You guys met in the cocktail. So just said. You didn't walk yeah, there. Pretty you much. Walk in the cocktail. I'll tell you everything that happened. And y'all going to be straight up with me about what I'm facing. That's all I want to know. Well, no. Know the the cops can um, lie to you. You guys to tell me, hey, man. It's legal. Is that is You're that. an idiot. This is this. I just want to know. Just, just, so just, I don't know just, just, just right for the now. fact, just for the fact that, like I said, my, my girls. Yeah, no, I got you. I don't know the entirety right now. So while I'm here, um, a couple of officers talked to Erica. Um, I'm That's not the only one working on it, so I don't know to everything. I got a report to a boss, so I don't know exactly everything that's going to be yet. That part's not a lie. I don't know exactly everything that's going to be yet. I'm just trying to figure out to get to that point where I can have a clear idea and call who I need to call to get some of the information to find that all out. I'm trying to get a clear idea of what really happened regarding what hurt and when you drove away where you were going. What did you not know? 
You know what I'm saying? Because right now I don't know everything. Wow. Because I'm out here and, and they're out there. I'll watch. Right. And I'm like, how long do I got to sit in these? Wait, where are we at? Ski on. How long do I got to sit in these jails before I can call somebody? Get a phone call. Let my, you know, let my daughters know. Hey, man, I don't know what's going on, but it, it's good to hear your voice. Are y'all okay? Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying, we're trying to, to get to that point, Darrell. But no corrections. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. I, I shouldn't be doing left. it, but I am. Where were you? Did you know, or did you not know? Were you just mad and you left? Where were you going when you initially drove off? That's easy. If you didn't know where the hell you were going, you didn't have an idea. You didn't have a particular destination in mind, so be it. It was on the highway to the danger zone. And we've been talking a couple hours. You want to sit and eat a minute? I wish they had some Tylenol. I've been trying to fight this pain, man. Yeah, so well. They might, I don't know. Yes, they but show, I, I, I don't actually, know how. Did you ask them? Yes. So they don't? They just said they were. I'm old enough to kill myself slowly. We'll see. Does it help if I hit you with this stick? It hurt worse now than it did yesterday, or last night, rather. Yeah, it's going to be sore. It's definitely sore. No doubt about that. Oh, my God. Take a break and see if you can round up the time a little bit of me. Yeah, we can see if we can. How about we see if we want me to see if I can find some? Yeah, I just wanted to. Let me see if I can find some. It's so many things going through my mind right now. The pain, the... You I'm don't not know. Even, I didn't even know... She called the, the word. She didn't call like, the cops or yeah, someone else. Did. I know you said you, you lost your phone, or you didn't yeah. know where, where it went dead, and now you don't know where it is. If we find it, so we know it's yours, can get it back to you. I know you said it's cracked, but no, well, it, it, the screen is cracked, but it has a. Um, I don't think the, it went all the way to the glass. The post, so we know it's yours, and we can um, return it. It, it doesn't. It doesn't have a number code. It has. You have to. Can you draw it. Do it with, with that. You draw it. It's dead. It's not even gonna turn on. <laughs> yeah, but we don't want to give it to somebody else. We don't want to give it to somebody else. You know, it's like I saw the mouth cancer with none of the nicotine. It, it, I don't want to debate about smoking. Right it's been sufficiently, sufficiently scolded. The charge. Is dead, so, but like I said, we can charge it. I don't want somebody else. else. To say, oh, that's my phone. Even though we're giving your property to somebody else. Wait a minute. So that sounds like y'all got my phone. If we find it, I can say we have uh -huh. it. Find it. Fucking idiot. Sorry. This is sad, <laughs> No, you're right. All right. So in that direction. Okay. All right. Okay. No, I don't know if they have it now. If, but if we find it, you don't have it, so it. Think to be in somewhere in the area of that house. And the video stopped at one hour fifty four minutes thirty seconds. Can you, ex can you explain to the jury what just happened in this clip? <coughs> I would love to hear it. Overruled. The witness and the answer. So in this clip, um, there's a couple things. Um, <laughs> First, obviously, the conversation medicine. With Brooks at this point has gotten um, into the parade issue, the driving issue, which is a little bit more serious. Um, I noted that for the first time in a long time, um, he began bringing up pain in his shoulder again, um, something he hadn't been doing for quite some time up to that point. Um, in other words, I don't believe seemed him. Seemed and felt deceptive, as if it was perhaps a stalling tactic. The other issue became in the What's context of tactics? Phone. So um, the phone that we ultimately recovered from Mr. Brooks, um, one was an Apple iPhone. That is the code I was specifically requesting from Mr. Brooks at this point. Um, we have forensic analysts who download electronic devices. Those could be DVR systems, computers, but most oftentimes in our technology today, they're, they're cell phones. Um, and when I provided that code to Detective David Fine, who does that type of work, um, he indicated that could not be the code as the Apple iPhones um, 
did not have swipe codes, they should have had numeric or facial recognition. Thank you. Directing you now to two hours, two minutes, 30 seconds, and playing until two hours, five minutes, and 45 seconds. And it is starting at 20230. Look forward to, but it's like <laughs> this woman, man, and I love her to death, man. I want her to be my wife, man, but I just wish somebody could tell her that. Like, <laughs> I wish somebody could really tell her, like, man, this dude loves me, man. Why are you doing this to this guy, man? He literally wants to marry you. 16 years, man, off and on. I'm not gonna go mess with nobody else, man. That, that's the person that I want to be with, but I'm not gonna continue to be the scapegoat because you want to drink. And, and when you know I don't, you making it seem like I just beat up on you. Like I'm just like you're a punching bag or something. I don't wake up and be like, oh, bitch, I'm going to hit you. Well, I'm He'll like, find a way. Like, what? Mm -hmm. It's like almost like I'm demonized here. Like, <laughs> I'm not saying you're a demon. No, not you. Not not, not your ass. But it's just, it. I feel that way because you're trying to, trying to just, I, I know you heard that. Oh, my God. Uh Oh, I, fucking heard it. Sure. I know you heard, heard it. I heard it. Check. We're going to go check with them. Maybe they'll listen to us a little bit better. Fuck. Want to check? Get, oh, my God. Yeah, give us a minute. Ah. Uh, see what we got. Dude, they, it got to how, how, it gotta be something wrong, man. How in the hell is it? Brains will pop, too. Yeah, but why is it hurting like this and they say there's nothing wrong? The sprains can actually be more painful than a break. Whatever they got, whatever they did, it hurt so bad. Oh. God. Ah. There is a dark, fiery place reserved for people like this. Uh, yep. What is wrath? Sixth circle of hell? Got that title on. Thank you, Gary, for the clarification. It's been a while since I read the Inferno. And the clip ended at 205.45. Can you describe for the jury what you saw here? <coughs> yes, ma'am. So um, what I noted is that um, Mr. Brooks initially, as we're in the room, continues to suggest that he's in severe pain. Um, and once we're out of the room, there's no more groaning. There's no more grabbing of his shoulder. Rather, there's an interest in looking at the paperwork that's left behind and attempting to use the phone. As soon as that door opens, um, Mr. Brooks then suddenly places his face into his hands and is suddenly in despair again. Okay, moving to two hours, 49 minutes, zero seconds, and playing till two hours. Yeah, the eighth is the melody, but we don't need to, yeah. So maybe we'll throw two hours, the eight. 49 minutes, zero seconds. That'll be up to Manos to decide. So this is one thing between me.
What if it wasn't me driving? What if it wasn't you? What if it was my mom's truck? Mm-hmm. But I wasn't driving. Mm-hmm. What if it was you? What if it wasn't me? Mm-hmm. Who else would it be? That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Not not asking you who else would it be. Right. I'm just asking. What if I knew? Mm-hmm. Would I be asked to give that information? Well, like I said, we're here to gather truth. So if somebody else was driving that car. Yeah, I would want to know who that car is, so we go talk to that person. But a huge part of that is going to be your honesty with it. Right, right, right. Now I was just asking because you just ask. You know, you know, you you've already figured out you're not a, you're not an idiot. You're not a dumb man. You're a smart guy. Right. I I see that. You know that we've been working on that. The video stopped at two hours, 50 minutes, 40 seconds. What's going on here? He's playing on his narcissism. My answer. So at this point, Mr. Brooks, I've stepped out of the room, is offering up to Detective Stern that there's a possibility that someone else may have been driving the vehicle. Now, when asked about that, um, as we can see, he, he pretends he doesn't know who that person would be. Um, it's untruthfulness, it's deception. Um, Hold on a second. I'm going to refrain. I'm going to advise the witness to refrain from characterizing what Mr. Brooks is saying or not saying. It is solely up to this jury to determine credibility of uh, any of the witnesses and the believability of even any statements oh made. Oh my God, judge. Interviews, and I'm going to strike. Don't give him the speculation objection for on him. The record. No, come on, John. She has to. Like at this point in time, she has to preserve the process. So this interview goes on for another two plus hours. She does that correct? Yes. Um, overruled. It's foundational. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Does Mr. Brooks at any time ever tell you that <coughs> someone else is driving his mom's red SUV? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. The witness may answer. Based on his experience and expertise, deception in those statements. No other individual or no other name is ever provided. Thank you. And I'll direct you to two hours, fifty-seven minutes, thirty seconds, playing till three hours. I cannot five wait. Minutes, Forty-one seconds. Yep, nailed it. Happy MF. It is now at two hours, fifty-seven minutes, thirty seconds, and as the video commence. It's hurtful. So you, you brought that up where you don't want to see anybody or their nose. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, okay. You don't want to um, see anybody get hurt. Or sorry, you don't want to see yeah, anybody yeah. get charged for something they didn't do. But you already brought up too that if somebody yeah, tell them exactly what Rob's that they should be held accountable for it. And that you're willing to accept responsibility. What's going on? If it's can I show you something? You look like you try to fail me or something. No, no, I'm not filming. Are you? It's you. No, I ain't got no. Um, it look like whoever. It look like Greg, right there. It's in your face. No, that's not me. That's not you. That's not me. That's not you. No, I don't. I don't. Girl. That's Darrell. Hey, that's you. That's you, Darrell. Why you say it like that, man? Because we talked about the honesty piece. You keep telling me that you you tell you tell the truth when you did do something. You take responsibility when you do do something. And you might start again. Your mama car, mom's car again. It's to a child, which I know you care a lot about children. 
There's a criminal complaint for me. There it is. And it's like, yo. So, Darrell, what were you thinking when you went through? And you're building their case. That's all I want to know. I don't have no problem talking with you guys. You got people in here that have to go to the hospital. So, they're saying I I injured somebody, or you're saying I injured somebody. Yeah. So, I'm looking at what? Reckless endangerment? Very they're not lawyers. At the very least. People got hurt. That's reckless in danger. I don't know exactly what they're going to classify it. Yeah, people had legs broken. Dangerous where you may have hurt somebody by your actions. You did hurt somebody by your actions. So what am I being charged with? That's what I'm trying to say. I don't say. know exactly yet. Still working on it. I haven't been charged with All the details. You're not going to get that out of me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm explaining to you. Driving down there. You're, you're looking at people got hurt. Yes. Broken legs. And y'all saying that's nuts. I know that's you. How do you know that's you? Because I can recognize you. I can tell it's you. Yeah. And that's your mom's car. That you had the key for. I can oh my God! You. He was a Dunning Kruger lawyer way before you even entered the courtroom. Yeah, that's about what I'm facing. What do you think you're facing? I don't. I don't what do you think you're facing? What do you think hypothetically? I mean, you've been through this gamut before. Right, and y'all knew I was getting charged with this from day one, so why y'all couldn't just charge me and take me to the county jail where y'all was going to take me? Because we you wanted me to tell them myself. That's that, basically what y'all wanted me to do. You told us that there was reasons for everything. No, I'm saying, but, and I'm not trying to do this, y'all still, I'm not. By the way, reckless endangerment would be at the bottom of the list of all of the things you're doing. If y'all knew this already, why y'all just didn't take me to, why y'all just didn't do what y'all had to do? Here's where you're at right now. And it's like, you take me through the runner to, to get me to do something that y'all already. Can I speak? Here's where you're at. Okay. I'll tell you straight. Here's where you're at. One of two people did this. And I mean that from a human perspective. There's a God fearing Christian who loves his kids and his mom that you say you are. And I want to believe you are. And in many ways, you've presented yourself as. Who went out got in a fight with his girl, argument, whatever you want to call it, and went and, and just done screwed up. Or there's the malicious guy. The malicious guy who, who who's lied to me about his love for God, who's lied to me about his love for his mother, who's lied to me about his love for his mother. It's insane that he hasn't lawyered up yet. Two people, man. It's, I'm just saying, don't spin it. it don't spin it, man, because I'm not. Which one are you? I'm not going to spin it. Which guy are you? 
I'm the God fearing guy that you've been talking to since last night. Man. Tell me Absolutely, Jamal. You know that. You know that. Tell me what I'm facing. Just told you some of what you're facing. Some. Reckless endangerment. That's almost like saying I killed somebody. No, you want me to give you the entire. Oh, oh yeah. my. I'll do that. That's not what I mean. You did. That's not what I'm asking. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm talking about perspective. Remember when I talk to you about perspective, truth somewhere in the middle, all that, yeah. that's how yeah. I see what you're saying. You got me doing all this and that, but y'all sit up here and come in here. Well, not, I'm not blaming it on you guys. I'm not. But y'all sit up here and here. The police do this every single time. Even when you try to be, look, show me that guy. You, you try, try, you try, try to, to take control of the interrogation. Up with him. You try to tell him the truth. You try to do all this and that, and they still... Railroad, every single time. You're not trying to tell me the truth. It, it, not it's anymore. Not, it's not even, no, it, it don't got nothing to do with that because I just told you. I don't have a problem with telling you everything you want to know. I just wanted to have an idea. I, know. I just wanted to have an idea. That's all I said last night. You know what I want to know. And, I, know and that's happened. all I said today. You know what happened. Okay, you know. what am I being charged with? What are y'all going to charge me? You what are y'all going to recommend? What are y'all going to do? Because at the end of the day, I'm still, I'm still, this is why I feel the bad here. Oh. The video stopped at three hours, five minutes, 41 seconds. Sir, you had walked into this room or um, I believe you had presented a cell phone to Mr. Brooks. Do you recall that in the video? There's been an objection. Um, I'm going to sustain it and just ask you lay a better foundation. Sure. So you came in and you had your cell phone with you. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Did you receive any additional information when you and Detective Stern went out of the room um, prior to this clip? Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I did. What information did you receive? Overruled. Um, specifically, the photo. I mean, this is every actual leading and. Okay. Uh, and what was on your phone? Objection. Overruled. Can you can't see what's on the phone from the video. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. You can ask him on cross examination if you have questions. So the video or the photo I showed on the phone, if you look at the monitor right now. Um, and I'm facing it, if you face it up there, the right half. And is, you can, the, it's a touch screen. So oh. if you want to circle something or point to something and you can use your finger. Your finger, not that yeah. tool. That Sorry. tool doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of drew over it, but that half of the paper is a photograph that I was able to positively identify as Daryl Brooks, the defendant behind the wheel of the Red Ford Escape while it was in the middle of the parade route. Um, that picture was the same one that was on the phone when I showed it to him. Okay. How do we know that? Okay. We'll be able to cross-examine the witness. Um, that statement by Mr. Brooks is directing the jury to disregard as it's not proper testimony. Go ahead, next question. I apologize, Your Honor. Thank you. I appreciate that. What were the other, uh, what was on the other papers that you put down on the table? So the other papers, one of them was um, Mr. Brooks' vehicle shortly after it entered the parade route. Um, that is where I specify to him he's driving past a child. There's a child uh, towards the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, another one is the vehicle that was located parked on Maple Avenue within the city. Um, I would also note that when you look at those photos carefully, the initial one as Mr. Brooks is entering the route and passing by this child, you can see the vehicle is undamaged, where the second one I showed him where it's parked is significantly damaged on the front end. Were those the photos, all the photos that you showed him at this time? At that point, yes, they were. Okay. <clears throat> 
Now, he had said twice in this, I don't know if you recall, I will tell you what you want to know. Do you recall that being um, stated by Mr. Brooks? Um, overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am, I do. What did you want to know? I wanted to know why he drove through the route. I wanted to know what caused him to make that decision, what was going through his mind. Um, the evidence at that point, and this is evidence, as I'm stating, it indicated his mother's vehicle drove through the route, that he was the individual driving through the parade route when the vehicle went through the route. And I was looking for explanations why, intent, motive, whatever it might be for him to tell me and he's not, he's not willing to do that. This video goes on for another hour and 50 minutes. Did he ever answer that question? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. No, he did not. Direct your attention to video at three hours, five minutes, 57 seconds to three hours, 13 minutes and 58 seconds. It is now starting at three hours, five minutes, 57 seconds. Go ahead. It'll probably go before a judge, right? What God, I, feel bad for whatever I mean, I don't, it's nothing I can have them think because y'all already basically said, okay, this is what happened. We just want you to tell us this, that this is what happened so we can just charge you with this, which we're going to charge you with. Are you the good guy that screwed up or the evil guy that doesn't care? Oh, I definitely care. I you definitely care. Truth. I definitely care. Why would you try to scare like that? Just because I don't yeah. want to tell you something. Now I don't care. Now I'm the malicious guy. Now I'm this, now I'm that. Just because I don't want to talk. One other option. You know the truth. We've been talking for a couple Y'all apparently know the truth too. Apparently. You when we came in, it was to get your knew perspective this last on your side. Night. Come on, Kirk, you knew this last night, man. This was you knew this last night. night. Yes, I told you. That. And you could have yeah. been like, yo. Some people got hurt. We want to know what happened, man. I didn't know enough details last night. There were people out there all night, all night, processing a scene the entire night until about, I don't know, one day. Oh, y'all knew, about y'all noon today. knew, y'all knew all this, man. I didn't know everything. I'm telling you, you can believe me if you want, but I, I got no I, reason why you not, was complete. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying you're lying. I'm, I'm not saying you're lying. So that's what took so long. I'm not. But you but know also, how it got to be that way. But also, that's how it got to be that way. Because we're going round and around okay, and around and around. I'm just going to keep going round and round. And you're acting like you don't. I mean, it's acting like you don't know what these are. And, and you, you do. No, you're making it seem like I don't care. Like I'm just this heart. You don't. Well, it's I think that even, way. Okay, that's fine. But look at my position. I've been in here for 24 hours. I haven't even gotten a shower, good sleep. My shoulders fucked up. I haven't even got a phone call to notify anybody talking about my family. Not one time. I get the point. I'm just disappointed too because you lied to me, Kurt. Because you lied to me. Talked about what Nothing you want him to do with this 20 year kid. And did not just say, do I don't years. have any. I'm telling you what happened. The only thing I'm saying is I feel like you were trying to railroad me by how you went about it. That's oh all God. I'm saying. I'm not saying. Okay, we've well discussed that for about an hour. That covers it. So tell me what happened when you drove off. Because they think railroad is like a magic words. I get, I get you're pissed about that. And I'm not going to fault you for it. I'm not going to tell you not to be mad. I'm not going to tell you not to feel like, man, that, that was bullshit, but Carp, why did you do that? If that's the way you feel, gotcha. It's okay. I'm not going to tell you you can't. I'm not going to sit here and tell you how you should or should not feel about how I went about presenting things last night. Okay? But well, what I've confronted you with and told you today is your mom's car is out here. I've now shown it to you. You know, you want me to, you know, Tell you all these things. No. Hold on. But what I told you from the start, and I did tell you this, is that part of it's a give and take. There's things I'll tell you, but I can't just tell you everything. We've shown you pictures, right? We talked about 
the roles were reversed, what you want. Yes, they're trying to do precisely that. Yeah. To do. We talked about that. What would you want it to do if it was your kid with a broken leg? And look, so I want to hurt. Hurt. A lot of people did. A lot of people got hurt. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. They're really were there. No, I'm saying a lot of people got hurt. Yeah, there's people hurt. Like that? Good legs and stuff like I told you. Cautions in their head. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see that happen to nobody. Do. I don't believe you would either. Yeah, but you and I'm not make, saying it's on purpose. You just thought, you just thought, yo, this dude is heartless. So tell us otherwise. You I didn't I'm say that. I'm asking like, you what man, do you like, want it to be perceived as? Tell us how it is then. We're wrong and it's not heartless. Tell us what, what it was. I'm here to listen if it's something different. I'm sitting here. I haven't walked out. No, they're here for fun. Oh, y'all know. Y'all know. Listen, man. Y'all know. Y'all know. If I did not talk to that woman, I would never, ever be sitting right here talking to y'all right now. I'm not blaming her. Like I told you, I'm not going to demonize that woman. She's a good woman when she's not drinking. It's not about her anymore, Drew. I know. And I, I believe, believe that she wouldn't be in this position if you hadn't talked to her. I, I believe, believe that. You didn't have to put the picture down. You have to. Stroller. That's a stroller. Yeah. So a kid got hurt. Yeah. A kid. Yeah. Bad. You say a lot of people got hurt. Checked out. Yeah. A lot of people got hurt. To me, yeah. it's a good injury if, if a doctor's got to check you out or you got a broken leg. Yeah. So what do you call my shoulder? <laughs> I'm just making a joke. And you're gonna fucking laugh? I don't know. Sorry for cursing, but. Uh... I want to believe you're the man you say you are, girl, but I, I, I'm not laughing because there's, there's nothing funny about this. No, I was just saying. No, it's not. It's never been that. Dude, I don't take my life as a joke. I don't. I don't take my life as no joke. I was just making a joke about my shoulder when you just said, you know, if it's mm -hmm. a serious injury, if you got to get looked out. And I was just saying, I had to get looked out. Oh, my God. The jury's already decided. They treated it like, oh, I'm done. It's been the you're the guy in cuffs, so... Yes. Or not me. Yes, they do. No, I'm just saying that's how they, not how you acted. That's how they were acting. Oh, well, it's nothing broken. Well, why do I keep having this thriving, burning pain if there's nothing wrong? Where were you going, Jerome? I apologized. Help us understand something. I can do that. I just want to understand what's. So these parents I want to understand. Very short. I want to understand. Depends when they go to liberation. Sometimes they might just hang out for a free lunch. Otherwise, yeah. under three. Something you're looking at, right? That's my bet. You guys have an idea? I'm wondering whether anyone's going to jump out of the jury box and try to tackle him. It would be a strong impulse in me. Because nothing's handled. Tell you why? Not when you have, not when you have God in your life. No, it, it is because <laughs> that's what I believe anyway. I, I believe that too, but you don't want to have God in your life when you sit in the prison. Can't see your family. Can't see nobody. What, what does it matter to you? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. 77 charges. Let's stop at 3 hours, question. 13 minutes, 58 seconds. That might just take time. Sir, what went on in this club? I would just blind sign all of these. My answer. All of them, I don't well, care. The I was continuing to try to um, get Mr. Brooks to tell myself and Detective Stern what occurred, explain the reasons why. 
Um, I want us to take to sign your name to you know, 77 why it happened. Um, I was more direct with him at this point and, you know, told him that recklessly endangering safety was certainly a possibility of the charge here. Um, I let him know that people got hurt, including broken legs and um, concussions, yet um, Mr. Brooks was still unwilling to explain to us, give us the clarity, give us the information we were asking for to understand, you know, why he did it. Um, you know, despite us talking about God, we, yeah, well, you know, I, I talk about the sector I don't want to get into and what the conversation. You know, if he had injured one of Mr. Brooks's children, that's something that comes up and what he would want a person to do if this was one of his own family members, I guess to say if the rules were reversed. Um, but none of those things were anything that um, made him any more willing to speak to us. It continued to be um, really demands. To, uh, I'm not a redhead. I'm a blonde. It's just delighting. Point. He's, he's being told what he's very likely looking at. Um, but that kind of back and forth just continued to occur. At a time during the time yeah. I spent with Mr. Brooks on the 22nd or the 21st, did he ever ask how any of the injured people were doing? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name in this leading the witness. Overruled as to both the witness may answer. Um, no, I mean, for example, I, I gave examples of concussions, um, broken legs, but there was no follow-up as to whether these concussions were going to cause people brain damage, um, whether the broken legs would impair people from walking again, or if there'd be amputations. Objection, speculation, cut them off. Or address that. That's getting inappropriate. Right. Yeah, that is. Bring your attention to the video at three hours, 40 minutes to three hours, 44 minutes and two seconds. It's it. I would like that last answer by the witness strike. How can anyone determine what will happen as a result of an injury? How can Thank you, you Judge Come on. Oh, my God. He actually is making um, it reasonable. Your objection arguments. is noted. It's overruled. May I have that timestamp again for this clip? Sure. It's three hours, 40 minutes, zero seconds to... Sorry. That was a reasonable objection. Minutes, that was a reasonable objection. You can go ahead. What are the charges? And we're incriminating stuff. I'm already like I'm about to lose my life, man. Can I ask a quick question? Hold on, watch it. I know. Why do you want me to watch it? I'll show you. I just want you to watch it. Watch it. Why though? Watch it for me. Why though? Because I want you to see what's in the video. Oh, I'm not going to like this, am I? Did you watch it? No. Will you? I just want to know why you want me to watch it. Because I want you to see what's on the video. Why don't you want to watch it? I just want to know why you want me to watch it. I, didn't say I just it. want you to I see what I told you. Problem. You're not accepting the answer. I told you I want you to see what's in it. That's why I want you to watch it. You wanted information from us for sure. I want you to watch and see what's in it. Yeah, it's a good point. It's information share. It's like you like badgering me like a little but bit. But Darrell, you asked me a question. Okay. And this is more than what we had before. So I am showing you more. I'm asking you to watch it. Will you watch it? I mean, I don't have a problem with okay, I just fine. want to know what what was the reasoning. Because I want you to see what's in it. Because he's engaging in an investment. That's complex. It's just, you, you know, know what I'm saying? It's just that I want you to see what happens. I'm just saying I, I already know. I already have an idea from what you guys were saying earlier. But I want it's you to like, see it. It's like watching my, like, all I'm thinking about right now is here. We'll talk in a what the hell of a journey is being with this is how my story ends. That's all I've been thinking about. Like, there's right. nothing that I want to. Your story ends badly. Why do you want me to see that car? Why? Because I think it's important. Why is it important? Is it to make like what is it? Why don't you want to look? I just I'm just asking. I'm not I'm not trying to 
I'm raising my voice at you, or I'm not. I'm just asking you why you don't want to look. I'm just saying, why do you want me to look? So you I think it's important. So you see what happened. You say you told you me what happened. You already told me what happened, right? Y'all told me what happened. I understand my life is over. I'm trying to come to grips with that. I'm trying to come to grips with the fact that this is how my story ends from trying to love somebody. I've never seen my kids again. My mom, my relationship is gone for me. And it's like, what is it? What is it to look at? And what my life is for me to look at my life in? That's you, Jarrell. Is it, is it looking at my life ending? These are the same quotes. I'm just telling you that. Okay? I think. It's important you see these. It's important for me to see my life. It is important for you to see them. For my life. Are we gonna? Are we gonna? Are we gonna keep going round and round about this, or is there something you want to tell me? That is gonna help me at this point. Everybody can. Everybody knows what was going on from day God to last night. While I was getting investigated, while I was, you know what I'm saying? Okay. 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 There's the children right there. There's the kids. See that little kid right there? Yeah. Sir, and it did stop at three hours, 44 minutes, two seconds. What were you showing Mr. Brooks? Patient leading. Overruled. You may answer. I don't consent to that name <laughs> being used. At that right. point. <laughs> were you done with the objection? Yeah, I was. All right, it's noted and overruled. The witness may answer. Um, at that, <clears throat> excuse me. At that point, I was showing Mr. Brooks a um, video that had been provided to me um, of him operating the Red Fort Escape through the parade route. Um, at that specific point, uh, Mr. Brooks was struck members of the Waukesha South Marching Band, and um, I wanted him to see it. There's more information. He was asking for it. I felt it was important to see his reaction to it, see if he'd be willing to talk about it. And at the point where I paused it and brought the piece of paper that is, his head is now down on, I paused the video at a point where you could see that it was Mr. Brooks behind the wheel of the vehicle. And the point at which I paused was a still photo of that moment that was on the paper. So it was, Guess the same picture. Did you get any further with Mr. Brooks in the next hour that's contained in um, the survey? No, I did not. Objection. No consent to being called that name. Overruled. The witness's answer may stand. On the 22nd, did you end up collecting DNA from Mr. Brooks? Yes, I did. How how was that obtained? Um, through buccal swab. So it's a they're basically um, Q tips out of a sterile package. I used two of them, one to swab the inside of the right inside of his mouth, and the other the left inside of his mouth. Sir, just direct your attention back to uh, this video one last time. Did the defendant ever <coughs> watch that video? Leading. Overruled the witness may answer. No, ma'am, he did not. Nothing further. All right, we will pause for our lunch break now. It's 1243. I appreciate everyone's patience as we were able to at least complete the direct examination. When we come back from lunch, Mr. Brooks, you can start your cross-examination. Um, we'll take an hour and 15 minutes, so come back at 2 p.m., everyone. All rise for the jury, please.
Holy Toledo. That's the PGA yeah. saying it. You get you guys run you guys run this morning too, watching that all all that crazy with him being put in the other room and coming back and all that. I, I was know. watching it on my phone, but yeah. I was hoping that I was going to make it on before he got kicked out because I just felt it from the very, very, very beginning of how today started. Yeah, it, it, I wish, you know, not going to say shit about Spectrum, but God, I wish I had been on at that time. But, oh, my God. That's hard. That that interrogation, I mean, they already have the goods. It's not like they need to prove up the case, but it, that's, uh, I don't know. Would you characterize that as admission? I'd say it's pretty damn close. I would say it doesn't matter. Like, even yeah. it, the, the absence of an admission itself is an admission. I mean, the, the detective plays it out perfectly, laying out every pitfall, every trap you could fall into, doubling back on questions, having him give the same answer several times, just spaced apart by time. And then at the very end, trying to show him to get a reaction out of him for what he's done. And I mean, it's all playing out for the jury. And if you're feeling uncomfortable having watched that, just imagine the jury that's watching the video simultaneously. In the community where it happened. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And beyond that, I mean, his behavior in the interrogation room is entirely in step with his behavior in the courtroom. And he does all of that garbage in front of the jury. And he, he's just obviously remorseless. He genuinely does not care about the damage caused. He's only caring about what his potential consequences might be. It's yep. even like it, he goes from quite literally a question that is asked and they play a piece of the video where it shows him acknowledging his name. Um, it shows him talking to the detective and then the, the next question asked by the prosecutor who someone get that woman some tissues because she's been struggling through that cold all morning. Um, next question is from the prosecutor who says, you know, Mr. Brooks says, and he stands up and objects. I don't consent to being called that name while the jury has in front of them a still frame of him Acknowledging that his name and then yep. watching all these terrible things. Well, I don't think that would ever have been a decent defense anyway, but no, it the, certainly oh. it, it destroys it, any credibility, even if he thought in some sort of alternate universe that that was an actual defense. They they did a really nice job with the interrogation too. It's standard technique, but they just they're like, oh yeah, you, you know, this the sort of empathizing. Yeah, I know women are crazy. It's like guy, guy to guy stuff privately. You, you can tell me, and then he just starts singing. I mean, literally, it took that much, and then he just rolls over and he's lying to start with, but lying in a way that's really bad form. And then and then they then they they let him do that for a while, and then they say, no, we know more, and then he just completely caves. Yeah, he yeah. absolutely collapsed under interrogation in a kind of like almost remarkable way. Like I don't think that most interrogations go that cleanly. I mean, yeah, they can prove that this case. You could, yeah, I mean, that you could get gotten this suppressed, say for some reason. There's no good reason to. But let's say you got this this uh, interrogation suppressed. You can prove this case without it. But it's still powerful, the, the the lack of remorse and the reaction, just like you guys were saying. There was one moment that I want to kind of harken back to, and it's kind of an educational thing. At some point, he says, like, unless you tell me what I'm facing, I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Now, a defense attorney might try to argue that that's an invocation of the Fifth Amendment. But under the Supreme Court rules, you need to clearly invoke the Fifth Amendment. So just saying, unless you do this, I don't want to no. talk to you, that does not end the interrogation if you continue to talk. And everyone needs to know this. If you're going, God forbid, no one in the chat ever actually has to deal with this. But you need to clearly invoke your Fifth Amendment for it to apply. And John, is John, this is this is my chat. We're talking about this is this is uh, actual information here. All right, I told you this yesterday, Mike. When you bring me on, I'm gonna try and bring a little bit of education into the. Into no, it's okay, Mike. I'm pretty sure half the chat needs it at some point in time in their life, anyways. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, all right. I, I'm going to close this stream down because I, I th this is all John's fault, by the way, Rob. Where he yeah. started this history, he's like, oh, do it tomorrow, do it tomorrow. And, and he talks me into it. <laughs> he talks me into it. Then I show up and he's he's nowhere to be. He's sunning himself on the beach over there in Clearwater or something. No, that, I got actually my understanding. screwed by Spectrum, but, you know, either way. Although, actually, you don't look, you don't look like you've gotten a lot of sun, John. I'm not going to lie to you. No, I, I, <laughs> I try to avoid sunlight. I am very Irish, and we don't tan well. All right, right. Thank you guys so much for coming by. I'm gonna go. I'll th I'll throw links back out if you can ha if you can hop hop back on. I I've got other stuff to do, but I can't miss the the the, the horrible I need cross examination that we're that we're about to embark upon here. Yeah, just cast out the link, and I might jump back on because this is gonna be painful to watch, and I can't. <laughs> oh, I can't. Gonna I'm painful. gonna be. I'm gonna Let's be in pain for the pain. Yeah, I'm gonna I be in pain. Me. I might as well be in pain like watching it with friends that I can you know, <laughs> yeah. sh like share the pain with. And in case you haven't yet, everybody go to Lawn Lumber, like, subscribe, do nice YouTube -y things. Same thing with Jay Rabine Law. Thank you, sir. All right. Peace yeah. out. I will see you guys all in a little bit. See I'll see you after lunch break. All Take right. Care. All right. Bye.